Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compounds part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. What we will study? We will study carbon, allotropes of carbon, we will study organic compounds, we will study hydrocarbons. In hydrocarbons, we will study saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. We will study namings of hydrocarbons, we will study isomers, we will also study homologous series. We will study some functional group of hydrocarbons. We will study coal and petroleum. We will study some important carbon compounds. And we will also study soap and nitrogen. These are the topics we will cover in this chapter. So the first thing that comes to our mind is what is carbon? Carbon, you must have seen one of the form of carbon is the coal. Coal you must have seen in your life. So this is one of the form of carbon. Carbon is nothing but it is an element and it is a non-metal. Please note, carbon is a non-metal. Carbon is generally poor conductor of heat and electricity. That's why I've used most of the carbon because there is an exception to it, which will cover it. But in most of the cases, carbon is poor conductor of heat and electricity. The name carbon is derived from the word Latin word called carbo and carbo means coal because if you think of carbon, the first thing comes to your mind is coal right and that was the first discovered form of carbon and this word carbon came from this coal and you'll be surprised to know that earth has only 0.02 percent of carbon and still we have a separate chapter for carbon will we have will have a whole branch actually but the branch is called inorganic chemistry this whole branch of uh, chemistry deals with carbon compounds. We have only 0.02% that's a very small percentage we have for carbon in the earth crust but still we have a huge importance of carbon in our daily life. We will study that why we have a special privilege for carbon but before that you should know that carbon has only 0.02% in this earth crust. If you talk about the earth crust, if you talk about atmosphere it has only 0.03% of carbon dioxide, right? Still we talk about global warming, carbon dioxide increase and all. But if you see, it has only 0.03% of carbon dioxide, the atmosphere. And there are various forms of carbon, uh, C12, C13, C14. Uh, if you see, these are various isotopes of carbon. This guy is, I think, radioactive. But we will be more focusing on this guy, C12. C12 carbon right this is normal carbon is c12 carbon so c14 is radioactive yeah so we'll be focusing more on the c12 carbon and they are all different isotopes of carbon you must be knowing what are isotopes isotopes are uh, elements which have same atomic number but different atomic mass for example each of these has atomic number six but atomic mass is different and then they exhibit different property right so they are called isotopes so carbon has three isotopes We'll be focusing on C12 one. Now the question that should come to our mind is why should we study carbon? I told carbon is a non-metal, good. Carbon is non-conductor of heat, good. Carbon has only 0.02% in atmosphere and 0.03, sorry, 0.02% in earth crust and 0.03% in atmosphere. Good. Big deal? Nothing. But then why should we study carbon? Why have a we have a special branch of uh, chemistry that deals only with carbon? So if you see this diamond, you must have seen in your mother's uh, finger or somewhere. Uh, this, this diamond is a very precious thing and the ladies um, special friend she called. They are actually nothing but carbon. The coal is carbon. The graphite which is used in batteries, they are carbon and they are good conductor of electricity. Good conductor. So this was one exception where uh, this is good conductor of electricity. We'll explain why it is good conductor. We will explain or we'll study graphite and diamonds in detail. There we'll explain why it is good conductor of electricity. You see, uh, the whole lot of material around us, the plastic bags, the plastic bottles, this different plastic bottles, the water jar, the CD compact disc, all these are nothing but carbon. They're all carbon. The soap which we use, it's carbon. Even the liquid soap which you use is also carbon. The detergents which you use in our home 
that's also common. A lot of cloth fabrics are also common. Not all, but a good number of them are common, right? We have the games which we play, right? They are all made of plastics or sometimes it's uh, paper kind of things. They are also carbon. So most of the games which we play, uh, which we have played when we were kids, they are all made of carbon. The pens, the paper on which we write during exams or also we take notes, that is carbon. The pencil with which we write, it's carbon. It has, this guy is graphite. The eraser which we use to erase, that is also carbon. The tea we drink, the sugar, the sugar, the sugar here, which we add in the tea, that's also carbon. When you fire the wood, the wood, this wood is also carbon. The alcohol which uh, people drink, which they should not use, uh, drink is not good for health, but a lot of people still drink. The alcohol that is used for drink is also carbon. The petrol is the most critical thing. All the vehicles run on petrol, all of the machines run on petrol, the generator, the, uh, the diesel generator, the electric generator runs on diesel. So all these uh, uh, things around us, it runs on petrol. The train, the car, the bus, and you see a lot of uh, uh, issues happen when the petrol price goes up, the government calls for strike and all this thing happens because petrol is a critical thing, right? And that is nothing but carbon. The gas which we use in our home, the LPG gas, we call this guy as LPG gas, right? Which our mom used for cooking. This is also made of carbon. I think in this you can understand the necessity for carbon in our life, right? So you start with your day uh, with the toothbrush. The toothbrush thing generally is made of plastic, that's carbon. You go to a shopping mall, you do shopping. You come with some carry bags, it's also carbon. Your clothes get dirty, you wash them with detergents, also carbon. You take bath with soap, that's carbon. Your food is prepared using LPG gas, that's carbon. You drive car or you, you go to school in bus, everything runs on petrol and that's carbon. Right? So carbon, the sweets which you eat in the sweet shop during festivals or during normal time also, the pastries, the cakes, everything is carbon. So carbon has a very critical importance in our life. In the exams, you write on paper, that's carbon. You write with a pencil, that's carbon. You erase with something, that's carbon. So most of the thing is a carbon, right? So carbon has a very, very critical importance in our day-to-day -day life. In spite of the fact that it's only 0.02%, but it has a critical role to play in our life. And that's the reason we have a special branch of chemistry that deals only with carbon. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compounds part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. Why the carbon is so special? Why, why it is that carbon has such a huge number of compounds, right? One reason is that carbon forms covalent bond. The second is there are four electrons in the valence cell and that's one of the reasons why it forms covalent bond. It's self-combined to form long chain and there are different forms of carbon called graphite, diamond and bulk Mr. Fuller is one we'll discuss so. The first point is the carbon forms covalent bond. If you're not clear what the covalent and uh, ionic bonds are, so I'll explain uh, in or you can watch my previous videos on that or let me just explain it once again for example you talk about sodium chloride NaCl right so this guy sodium wants to lose one extra electron because it has one extra electron in the outer bits shell extra one extra one extra so this guy is more stable in Na plus this guy is stable now Chlorine needs one guy because it has seven uh, electrons in the extra shell and that extra shell will be filled if it has eight electrons, right? So the, the, the valence electron, it will take one electron from uh, sodium and it will become Cl minus. Both are stable. Both are stable. Na plus is stable. Note Na is not stable. Cl is not stable because Na has one extra electron and Cl has one less electron. If you compare that with the uh, filled ones, 
So this guy want to lose one electron, this becomes Na plus and why that is called metal. metal. And Cl will take one electron and it becomes Cl minus and that is called non-metal. Now they are stable, but if you see, it is stable, but it has got a positive charge, it has got a negative charge, but they are stable. So this positive guy will be attracted towards the negative guy, right? And uh, they'll form a bond. And this kind of bond is called uh, ionic bond, ionic bond. So in this case, if you see, Na had one extra electron, so it gave one electron to Cl, right? Got a positive charge. Chlorine says it took an electron, this becomes Cl minus, got a negative charge, but they are stable. Na plus is stable, Cl minus is stable. Now, they, since they have charge with them, so there's an attraction between Na plus and Cl minus, and they form a bond. And that bond will ionic bond because they're all ions, right? The second kind of bond is seen with the, uh, it's called covalent bond, where if you see this is a carbon, and uh, carbon wants to form a bond with, let's put an example of carbon dioxide, CO2, right? So carbon has how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six in the extra, the, the, the valence shell. Sorry, carbon has four. Carbon has four. Yeah, carbon has four. Oxygen has six. So oxygen, let's suppose, it has six here, right? One more oxygen output has six here. Now carbon has to has four electrons in the valence cell. It is mentioned here. Since it has four electron, it has it has to take four to become uh, stable, or it has to give four because if it gets four, it becomes four plus four. That is eight. That is a stable number, right? For this shell, or if it is lose four, it becomes zero. Zero is also okay. Right, it's stable in that case. So it can't take four, it can't give four, right? I'll explain that why why it can't take four, why it give, can't give four in the next few slides. So in this case, what will happen is they will share the electron. So if you see in this case, it will share two electrons with this oxygen and it will share two electrons in this oxygen. So in that case, oxygen also, if you see here, it had six electrons, it wanted to take electron, it wanted two extra electrons, but oxygen is not ready to give electron because it has six, right? It needs only two to give, become uh, stable. It, it, it will not give six. So in that case, oxygen is telling, okay, let's share. Carbon is saying, let's share because both, both are here willing to take electron. If you see carbon, oxygen, both are non-metals. Both are willing to take electrons. Nobody is ready to give electrons. In that case, when both person want the same thing and nobody is willing to give, they share, right? In the real life also, right? In this case, NaCl, sodium wanted to give, chlorine wanted to take. So they had this pact, very easy pact, where one wanted to give, one wanted to take, and they have formed this NaCl, right? They got this positive and negative charge. But in this case, nobody is willing to give. Carbon wanted to take, oxygen wanted to take. In that case, what should we do? So they have a golden rule of middle path, where they say, uh, don't give me, let's share. So in this case, they uh, carbon feels that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon has a feeling that it has eight electrons, but actually these electrons share. Oxygen also has a feeling that it has eight electrons. How? One, two, three, four, five, six. It had two electrons. It, it shared with carbon, right? So this particular oxygen feels that it has eight electrons and feels satisfied. Okay, yeah, I am stable, but actually it is not, right? The other oxygen also takes two electron from carbon and feels that it is stable correct with this both are happy carbon and oxygen such kind of bond where they share electrons to get a feel that they are stable is called covalent bond so we'll explain more on that we'll uh, take more examples Let's understand that in case of uh, my ionic bond they actually transfer electrons right one got positive one get negative and then the bonds form in case of covalent there is no polarity actually, you see, right? There is no polarity. There is no plus, there is no minus sign. It's just a shear electron. Correct? There is something called polar covalent bond also. There is something called polar covalent bond. For example, in working of water, H2O, so we have like this, oxygen has a 6, right? It wants uh, 1 from this guy, it takes 1 from this guy. So if you see, now it is all shed because Oxygen had six, it took one from this hydrogen, one from this hydrogen. It shared actually. So oxygen got a feel that it has eight electrons. It is happy with that, correct? 
so if you see oxygen had uh, six one with all dots oxygen has hydrogen has two with all star now oxygen shared uh, one hydrogen atom in this and one hydrogen atom in this oxygen get a got a feel it has got eight electrons like, happy hydrogen also got two because it has shared this guy shared and this guy shared right so both hydrogen also happy but in this case oxygen is more electronegative oxygen badly needs electrons so what will happen is they are shared the electrons are shared but oxygen will attract this particular guy more right this guy will be more attracted towards oxygen because oxygen is dire in need of electrons since they are they are sharing but it's not 50 50 sharing it's not 50 50 sharing it is like maybe 70 percent of the time the oxygen the particular electron is with oxygen and 30 percent of the time it is with hydrogen that's way since the electron is spending more time with oxygen this guy will get a slightly negative charge and this hydrogen item will get a slightly positive charge right because the oxygen is more inclined towards ox the electron is more inclined towards oxygen so oxygen is getting slight negative charge and this kind of bond is called polar covalent bond where we have a slight polarity and it has a covalent bond so these things we'll study more but just uh, to cover up i did that so now we have a special case of carbon it has covalent bond it has four electrons in the valence cell it self combines to form a long chain we'll explain that for example carbon can combine with another carbon right like this and can create a big chain and we have different forms of carbon graphite diamond and uh, bulk mixture fuller one, one more was there where it is all carbon but the structure the way it is organized the internal structure is different and that's why they look different thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again hello friends this video on carbon and its compounds part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam before watching this video please make sure that you have watched part 1 and part 2 now i'll explain why carbon forms covalent bond right as i told that since it has four in the outermost shell it can gain four electrons and gain can become C4 minus ion, but this will be difficult, right? The reason why I gave is nobody will give him four, but actually this is not the case, that's just way to understand it, but it will be difficult for this guy to hold 10 electrons. See, this guy, if you see carbon, the atomic number is six, correct? That means there are six photons, six positive photons. This guy, can't hold 10 electrons right because if you it, it already has six electrons right so if you see a, a configuration of carbon carbon has six electrons six protons and six neutrons so ignore this electrons now neutrons now six electrons six protons so this guy is having six electrons six protons so this the nuclei will have six protons and six neutrons so this guy proton will not have enough charge to hold 10 electrons this guy can hold six electrons right by default it has six electrons like this i think two here and four here in the next shell right but at the max it can hold seven or eight because there are six protons this proton should be sufficiently charged right to hold because it's all about the positive and negative charge that holds the electrons right we will study more of this in the class uh, 11 when we study the structure of electrons, uh, structure of atoms where we have these photons and how these electrons are bind towards it and all these shells and all. We will study more in detail in the next class. But just understand all this. This, this guy has only 6 uh, protons, right? This guy can't hold 10 electrons because there's a limit to it. It has some 6 proton charge. This guy can at the max take 7 or 8 electrons. It can't take right and that's why the the option to take four extra electrons is gone correct the other option is to give four electrons because if it gives four electrons it has only two electrons and then it will become stable but it won't be able to lose four electrons because if you take out some electron from here that needs lost energy right 
and to take out four electrons from this it will require huge energy right and that is very difficult very difficult so in that case the option of losing four electron is also gone right so it can neither take electrons four electrons it can neither give electrons so it has no other way than to share correct because see in case of sodium sodium can easily give an electron because it has only one extra electrons in the shell and it can easily give chlorine can take one electron easily because it has only one electron deficiency it can take that also the chlorine uh, nuclei can manage with one extra electron sodium guy will also manage with one deficient electron right but in case of carbon extra four electron this guy itself the nuclei won't be able to hold four extra electrons and removing four electron is also not possible because removing four electrons will need huge energy correct and thus carbon will overcome this problem by sharing its valence electron right and this sharing is the result of i mean this covalent bond is nothing but the result of this sharing and please note carbon is not the only element which uh, which uh, uh, which shows the covalence bond there are other element also which creates uh, or which uh, which creates molecules uh, using this covalent bond but the carbon covalent bond is the strongest covalent bond so we'll now study some properties of covalent bond the first is the physical state they are generally please note generally liquid or gas some of them may exist as solid because the covalent bond is not as strong as my ionic bond they are generally insoluble in water please note they are insoluble in water as other polar covalent bonds but soluble in benzene why why i tell you see they are insoluble in water and other polar solvent uh, polar so solvents because what is a polar solvent as i told if you take water molecule h2o if you see this polar uh, thing here and there is a polar bond but oxygen is slightly negative why because oxygen is has more hunger for electron and it will uh, make sure that electrons spend more time with the oxygen so oxygen becomes slightly negative and hydrogen will become slight positive right so in these kind of uh, solvent the polar solvent if you put something like nacl because nacl is more stable with na plus and cl minus because they are stable right so nacl will have na plus ions and cl minus both are separate actually so let me draw like this na plus and cl minus ion right so na plus ion will be attracted towards oxygen and cl minus will be attracted towards this hydrogen positive and thus you see and that's the reason why uh, this common salt is nacl dissolves in water because water is a polar solvent right it has poles but since if you talk about the carbon compound the covalent compound that i'm talking about the normal covalent compounds now the polar one the polar, uh, polar covalent compounds they don't have any uh, desire to mix with water because water has a positive negative charge but this polar covalent the polar compound the covalent compounds they don't have any charge right so they are neutral and they are not attracted by these charge but if you see sodium chloride that has positive negative charge since there is a charge here so they are attracted towards the oxygen hydrogen part of the water and thus they mix but in this case they are not attracted but this gives the soluble in organic solvents like benzene and chlorine they generally have low melting and uh, boiling point again because the covalent bond is weaker than the uh, my ionic bond so they have low melting and boiling points electrical conductivity they generally don't i'll say they generally don't conduct right they generally don't conduct electricity now i talked about carbon i talked about the carbon compound i talked about the covalent bond now i have carbon i have something which has carbon i have to test whether it has carbon or not because i'm talking about carbon right i should know a test to find whether a particular object i'm talking about for example plastic or some cloth or petrol wood it has carbon or not a very simple test is burn it burn the material in presence of air right so if you burn it if it gives carbon dioxide gas 
it has carbon. Very simple test. You have anything, you just burn it. If it gives carbon dioxide gas, it is carbon. Else it don't have. So you can take paper, you burn it, you get carbon dioxide gas. You take uh, plastic, you burn it, you get carbon dioxide gas. And now, how to test carbon dioxide gas? I think we have done this. So if you pass this gas over lime water, right, that guy will turn milky. So this kind of uh, thing we have learned in the past uh, chapter where we have to test the presence of carbon dioxide. So we just pass the gas, the lime water it turns milky. So that's how you test the presence of carbon. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends. This video on carbon and its compound part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 3. I wrote the electron dot structure of water molecule just in front of you, right? H2O. I wrote for CO2. And we generally write for other molecules also. But there should be a rule to write this. Correct? There should be a rule to write this. And we may be given uh, to write electron dot structure of any other uh, covalent compounds. How to do that? So let's, let's learn the steps to write that electron dot structure and that's also called uh, Levi structure I think. Yeah, that's also called Levi structure. We'll explain that. So the first is write the electronic configuration of all the atoms present in the molecule. For example, I'm talking about water. You write the electronic configuration of hydrogen, oxygen. So I'm talking about carbon dioxide. Write the electronic configuration of carbon, oxygen. That's the first step. Then you have the electronic configuration that means you have the numbers of electrons in the valence cell then you identify the number of electrons needed to attain the noble gas configuration for example in hydrogen it has only one right so this guy needs one because this guy i'm talking about the second shell right for oxygen it has six so this guy needs two more this guy needs one more right why two more? Because the, I'm talking about the second shell that is 8. So if you see the shell, it has 2, 8, 8, 18, 18, like this. Correct. For hydrogen, if you write the configuration, this becomes 1. So that means it needs 1 more electron. For oxygen, if you write, it becomes 2, 6. That means it needs 2 more to get 8. For carbon, if you write, this becomes 2, 4 because the carbon atom number is 6, right? So that means it needs 4 more. Correct. I hope you get this. See, the electronic, uh, the atomic number of hydrogen is one, and the configuration is only one. So, and the normal configuration is we have two, eight, eighteen, eighteen like this, right? For this uh, valence cell, the number of atoms which can have in valence cell. For hydrogen, this guy is one, only one, and you see the number of electrons we need is two in the valence cell in case of hydrogen to make it noble noble state. For oxygen, the electronic configuration is 2, 6 because atomic number is 8. So this guy is 6. If you see, if you compare this guy with this shell, it has 8 number of electrons in this shell, right? So we need 2 more electrons to get to this shell. If you talk about carbon, it is atomic number is 6. Electronic configuration is 2, 4. I think this we have learned in the past classes and we'll learn more detail in the next uh, class, class 11, first chapter, I think, yeah. 2, 4 and if you compare this 4 with the 8 atoms that needs to be there in the valence cell that means I can say that carbon needs 4 electrons. Thus we get these values. Once we are done with this, we share the electrons between the atoms such way that all the atoms in the molecule get the normal configuration. And that's how we do. We share the atoms to make sure that everything, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, whatever we have, uh, the elements we have in this question, they are satisfied. And doing those, please keep in mind that the shared electrons are counted. So you have to count the shared electrons and they are counted in both the atoms sharing it. For example, okay, we'll take some examples, but please note that the shared electron is counted in both the atoms. We'll take my example, we'll uh, form a covalent bond for hydrogen. So if you see hydrogen has atomic number 1, Right, I'll write here hydrogen 
atomic number is 1 and electro config is 1 only right that means it needs two elect one electron why because if you see the electronic configuration is 2 8 8 18 18 like this right this we have learned is it's a 2n square form uh, we have this uh, K L M N orbit. This, I think this thing you have learned the past past classes where we we say that stable uh, electrons will have the two eight eight eighteen eighteen electrons in the outermost shell, right? This thing we have learned. So with this, if you compare one with this guy two, you need that you know that carbon needs one electron to make it happy. Right? Hydrogen needs one electron. So if you write the hydrogen. Uh, Thing it's S2. I'm writing for S2. That means we have one hydrogen here and one hydrogen here. Now hydrogen wants to. This guy wants one electron. This guy wants one electron. But nobody is willing to give. So they'll share. That means this guy hydrogen feels that he has both the electron, and this guy also feels that he has both the electrons. Correct. And thus, if you see that, if you count. For this hydrogen, there are two electrons because one his own electron, one he borrowed from this guy, or one is shared from this guy. If you talk about this guy, it has two electrons, one is personal electron and one shared electron. And that's how we write the electronic configuration for hydrogen. Let's take oxygen, right? Oxygen has atomic number as eight, electronic config as two six. So you compare with this guy 2, 8, 8, 18, right? So this guy should have 8, should have 8. So deficiency is how much? 2. So that means oxygen needs 2 electron to attain noble gas config, right? Because everybody wants to become stable in life. And that's why it needs 2 electron. So we talk about, I'm talking writing the structure for O2. This is my oxygen molecule, this is my oxygen molecule. Oxygen has, let's suppose, six, right? Because it has six here. And this guy, let me write with star. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy needs two. So this guy will share one with this guy and share one with this guy. Now this guy will feel that it has eight electron. Correct? Six, it had its own. Two, this guy share. This guy is stable now. Now, since this guy also shared, this guy also will get access to these two electrons. Correct? Now, if you see how many electrons are there in this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, his own personal electron, and two, this guy share. Now, if you see, it has eight electrons each, and that is the electron dot structure. Correct? Generally, we write like this. Uh, you take like this, you write one oxygen, you take one oxygen, you write one like this, right? So this guy has six, two is shared, right? So two is in the shared pool from here, two from here. So there are four in the shared pool, right? And this guy has like this. So it had six, it gave two in the shared pool. This guy had six, it gave two in the shared pool. Or let me draw with a dot so you understand more which atom came from which guy, right? So they are dots here and they are star here. So this guy gave two in the shared pool, this guy gave two in the shared pool, there are four in the shared pool and if you see oxygen, it will feel that it has eight electrons and this guy will feel that it has eight electrons. Let's write the electronic conviction of nitrogen. So nitrogen I write for N2. Nitrogen if you see at atomic number is seven. So electronic configuration is two five. If you compare this guy with 2, 8, uh, the normal gas configuration, that means this guy needs 3 more uh, electrons to get the normal gas. That means I can say that nitrogen needs 3 electrons to get to noble gas configuration. Right? Because everybody wants to become uh, stable in life. So noble gas are stable, so they want to be stable. It needs 2 electrons. That means if you write the nitrogen, it has one, two, three, four, five. Correct? Five electrons. 
one more nitrogen you write one two three four five since it is need it need three it will form one two and three three bond with this nitrogen now this guy will assume that this guy has got eight electrons five is personal three is shared and this guy will also get a feel that this guy got eight electron five is personal and three shared so if you write the electronic structure like this so we have a common pool in common pool three electrons we got from this guy and three electrons we got from this guy right so the number of remaining electron he has two and the number of remaining electrons he got is two because it is five it gave three in the pool and this guy also gave three in pool now if you see this guy has eight if you see overall five its own three from common pool and this guy also if you see it has eight five is own and three from the pool and that's how we write nitrogen correct thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again hello friends this video on carbon and its compounds part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam before watching this video please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 4 now let's take the polar covalent bond so before we study polar covalent bond we should know what electronegativity is electronegativity is nothing but ability of an atom to attract electrons electrons shared electrons correct so if, if one if a sharing is going on and if you got a molecule but some some atoms right attract electrons more and that kind of is called electronegativity so if atom forming a covalent bond have different electronegativity for example as 2 in the case uh, oxygen has more electronegativity than hydrogen then the atom with the higher electronegativity that is oxygen in this case pulls the shared electron towards it as I explained this and thus the atom with the higher electronegativity negativity in this case oxygen develops a partial negative charge and the one with the lower negative electronegativity is uh, hydrogen develops partial positive charge and this kind of bond is called polar covalent bond for example in this case this guy is my oxygen this guy is hydrogen and this guy is hydrogen this guy will develop slightly positive charge slightly positive charge and this guy will develop slightly negative charge why because oxygen has oxygen is electronegative in nature and it will pull the electron towards itself it will pull the electron towards itself a little more so electron will be sharing more time with uh, this guy oxygen than hydrogen we'll explain more of these when we go to class 11th and we study the actual structure it is of atom how the atom looks like what is the uh, position of electron in that and how the electron pools work we will we'll learn in more detail in class 11 just to understand that hydrogen in this case oxygen attracts electron more than hydrogen so this guy electron is spending more time with oxygen than with hydrogen because electron keeps moving it's not static right electrons keep moving and it revolves at a very very fast speed right keeps moving and when moving right it jumps when you call up or sharing in that case sometimes it is here sometimes it is here it keeps moving here and there right and that's what called sharing but when you say oxygen is more electronegative that means oxygen attracts electron more and electron is spending more time with oxygen that means it's a higher probability that this guy will be in this region than in this region that, that's what it means in terms of mathematics probability but in the real world if you go if you see this this oxygen keep jumping from here and here, here and here, and then it's form a covalent bond. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends. This video on carbon and its compound part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. Now we'll take allotropes of carbon. We have three allotropes of carbon which we'll learn and they are for the crystalline carbon and then 
we have called amorphous carbon. And amorphous carbon, nothing but you take small, small crystalline carbon and you gel it, you get amorphous carbon. And in that case, we have coal, charcoal, and lamp black. But we'll be more focus on this guy, the crystalline carbon. Because amorphous form, I feel, is nothing but a form of crystalline only where you have small, small crystals and it is joined in the amorphous way, right? And coal and charcoal is my example. But if you go by the properties and the way it is structured, we have crystalline carbon that dominates the uh, inorganic chemistry and we have carbon, di di carbon graphite and buckminster full grain. Three different crystalline forms of carbon which will Sorry, and they are all allotropes of carbon. And what are allotropes? We'll discuss that. So allotropes are nothing but they have same element in this. Element is same, everything is carbon, but the structure is different. Structure is different. The way it is organized, the way carbon bonds are happening, right? That is different. And with this, it gives different property. Because the property is not different, we are not bothered, we don't care. But when you see that my diamond and graphite both are same, both are carbon, but the property is different. Diamond, diamond, diamond is shiny, right? It is very hard. Graphite is good current of electricity, it's soft. Then only we have this curiosity to understand what is happening. Why that both has carbon but both looks different? And then we give this term called allotropes where we say that they have same element inside this, the, the, the building block is same, right? Both are made from carbon. That is a building block. But the way it is made is different. The structure is different, right? And that's why they have different properties. And carbon is the only one which has so many allotropes. So the first allotropes of carbon is diamond. So diamond, if you see in diamond, each carbon atom is bonded by four other carbon atoms. And I got this picture from Wikipedia. Right? So, if you see one particular carbon atom, if you take this one, if you see this one, let's take this guy. Right? Let's take this guy. So this guy, if you see, has one, two, three, and four carbon atoms. Each carbon atom, if you see, and you may say that this guy is linked only to uh, one, two, and three, but actually it is more because it has to add. It has to add, right? I mean, this is just a small part of this uh, molecule, but actually if you keep growing this, the same structure will grow. So the best thing is you can get you know, the center one or the one which has four. For example, this guy also, right? If you see, it has four carbon atoms. You see this guy, one, two, three, four. It's not attached, but eventually if you see, all these carbon atoms are linked to four other carbon atoms. Correct? And that's how the diamond is formed, where each carbon atom is linked to four other carbon atoms. You see this guy? This guy has, see this guy, this particular guy, it has one hair, one hair, two, three, and four, right? So this guy has four carbon atoms. And that is how it, it looks if you increase this, you know, if you make it bigger, then you'll see that each carbon atom, the black one is a carbon atom, is linked to four other carbon atoms. Please note, four other carbon atoms. So one guy, one carbon atom. So this guy is linked to one, two, three, and four other carbon atoms. Like this. Okay? So this guy is linked to four other carbon atoms. And this is the hardest substance known. And also note that we can create a artificial uh, diamond by putting carbon to a very high pressure and very high temperature. And these diamonds look exactly like the natural diamonds, but they are small. We can't keep, we can't make big diamonds. We, we can make only small diamonds because maybe because of the pressure and temperature we can give. Maybe in future, if we have a better technology, we can create bigger diamonds also. But currently we can make only small diamonds. And these small diamonds look exactly like the natural diamonds. And the point here to note was that each carbon atom is bonded to other four carbon atoms in the case of diamonds. And if you see, there is no free electrons here, right? There's no free atom, there's no free electrons, right? So in that case, they are non-conductor. Because everything is bonded, right? Because one carbon atom has four electrons, if you see, four free electrons, correct? 
and all these electrons are used to form a bond. That means there is no free electrons. Because if you talk about conductivity, a particular matter, a particular object will conduct electricity only if it has free electrons to conduct electricity. In this case, one carbon atom is linked to other four carbon atoms, right? So there is no free electrons because the covalent bond is formed. There is no free electrons for it to transmit electricity, and that's the reason why it is bad conductor. The second guy we will take is a graphite. You must have seen the graphite in the pencil or in the batteries. Here each carbon atom is bonded to three carbon atoms. Please note, in case of diamond, each carbon atom is bonded to four carbon atoms. In this case, there is one carbon atom. It has four electrons. Right? I will make electrons like this. And this guy is bonded to three carbon atoms. One guy is free. So you see one guy is free. There are four electrons. Right? It is bonded to three atoms, one guy is free. And that's why it conducts electricity. We'll explain that also. And it forms a hexagonal array. This is where it is formed. So you see, to take any carbon atom, right? This guy is bonded to one, two, three, four. It forms a hexagonal array. And there's a layer, this is one layer. This is another layer. And both these layers, right, they, they slide. And this image also I got from Wikipedia. And you can explore more from Wikipedia. It's a good source actually to learn more stuff. So this is the thing we have, this is the structure. And if you see this hexagonal array, they are placed in one layer. Uh, for example, this is layer one, this guy will be layer two. And then we have layer three also above it. So there's a layer and that's why it's soft because it kind of slides, right? There's a very weak force of attraction between them and this force called Van der Waal force of attraction, right? And if you see, that's why the graphite is smooth and slippery. And it is also a good conductor of electricity. Why? Because if you see only three is attached, one guy is free, right? One electron is free and that electron helps in conducting Electricity. It is a very good character of electricity actually because one electron is free to conduct electricity. These things will get more clear when you study the actual structure of an atom where you understand how the electrons behave. And I feel electron plays a very critical role actually. So if you see all these metals like sodium, potassium, chlorine, they are metals or non-metals because of the electrons. Because sodium can give electrons, chlorine can take electrons, right? So it is the electron which determines what kind of element it is. And the conductivity of an element, for example, gold conducts because it has extra electrons. So everything depends on electrons. It plays a critical role actually and it jumps, it jumps from here to here, here to here. It keeps doing that. And you will understand the beauty of electron mode when you study the, uh, the chapter of uh, atoms. The other uh, carbon atom, allotropes is Buckminster fluorine is very recently discovered, not very old. They are in the forms of carbon electrops. And the first one to be identified is C60. There are many of them actually. There are maybe you know, 670, C80, I don't know. But there are many of them. But the first one that was identified was 6C760. That is like a football structure. They are all carbons here, all carbons. And in this case, there are 60 carbons and they, are, they, are, they have the structure like football, right? And this is uh, named after this uh, US architect, Buckminster. And Buckminster fullerene is a dark solid at room temperature. Yes, guys, dark solid at room temperature. And if you see, this is neither hard nor soft. In case of diamond, it was very hard. In case of graphite, it was soft. But if this is something midway, it is neither hard nor soft. It has different property actually, and that's why it is sorry. And there are so many, uh, alert, uh, I mean, versions of this Buckminster full ring, and there's a hell lot of research going on on this Buckminster full ring. Not very old, I think 20 years something, not even 20, yeah. maybe 15 or something, yeah, 15 years or something, it was formed. I don't know the exact date, you can Google and find out the exact date it was formed. Very, really recent actually. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to 
watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compounds part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 6. Now I'll take some questions. The question is what will be the electron dot structure of carbon dioxide CO2. Same thing here, we'll have this carbon and oxygen. Carbon, atomic number 6, oxygen, atomic number 8. So carbon is nothing but 2,4, electronic conjugation oxygen is 2,6 and the noble gas is 2,8. So this guy needs 4, that means carbon needs 4 and oxygen need 2 because it has 6, it needs 2 to become 8. So this is what I know. It will form CO2, it will let's write, write like this. Carbon has 4, let's write 4 like this. Oxygen has uh, 6, let's write 6 like this. Here also 6 like this. Right? It needs 4, so it will carbon needs 4, it will take 2, two from this oxygen, 2 from this oxygen. Correct? And now carbon, uh, carbon will feel that it has got 8 electrons for its personal and 2 to borrow from each electrons. Oxygen will also feel that it has got 8 electrons. 6 personal, 2 from this carbon and this guy will also feel like the 8 electrons and then they will feel happy. Correct? And that is nothing but my electron dot structure of this CO2. What would be the electron dot structure of sulfur which is made of 8 atoms of sulfur? Please note this. This guy is a little uh, tricky part. But sulfur if you see it has 6 electrons in valence cell. That means it will need, it needs 2. Right? It needs 2. And it says that it is made of 8 sulfur atoms. So 8 sulfur atoms is like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's some, make something like this. 7, 8. Right? Now each of these will have 6. So let me draw 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This guy will also have 6. So let me draw 6 here. 1, like this I'll draw with this star. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This guy will also have 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sorry. All with dot I'll draw this one. Correct. This guy let me draw with stars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's simulate this guy let me draw with dots. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This guy let me draw with stars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This guy let me draw with the dot again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or if we draw this guy with something different because this dot doesn't matching, right? So, there are only 7 actually. There should be 8, I think. So, let me draw one more here actually. Sulfur. Let me draw something here. Let me draw here. So, let me draw this guy with a square. Square shape. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Right? I got 6 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. And each got 6. Let me draw this guy with something different. So let me draw with the guy with a cross like this. Okay? Now if you see, this guy should get 2. So it will take 1 from here and 1 from here. This guy also needs 2, it can take 1 from here, 1 from here. This guy needs 2, it can take 1 from here, 1 from here. This guy needs 2, it took 1 from here, it take another from here. This guy also needs 2, right? 1 from here and 1 from here. Similarly, if you see it has formed this kind of structure or W structure. 
right? Generally, the sulfur formed this kind of structure called double structure where you see all these are satisfied now. This guy got eight, six it had, one and one it got from these two left, this sulfurs. To take this sulfur, this had six, one it got from this sulfur, one it got from this sulfur. This is eight now. This guy had six, it took one from this sulfur, one from this sulfur, right? It's one straight line only. By mistake, I made so thick line. This guy also had six, it took one from this guy, one from this guy, it has eight now. Similarly, if you talk about this guy, it had six, it took one and one share. So that's how it is, it's W shape thing, and everything is satisfied now. This is the electron dot structure of a sulfur that's made of eight molecules. Correct. Some people ask, why did you make W shape? Why you didn't make a circular shape? I can make like this also one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, right? And if you add, if you combine these like this, it will also form the same structure, right? Because each molecule here you see is shared. This guy will also work, but this is by observation. So when the chemists observed the sulfur molecule, they found that this is a W shape. This is a W shape, right? And that's why we make like that. We don't make like this. So this is by observation, we were told by chemists that the sulfur makes W shape kind of structure and that's why we have made this W shape structure. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on common and some common part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 7. I told that the carbon has a lot of compound because it has a unique property of forming bond with other carbon atoms. And that gives rise right to a large number of molecules. This property is called chemistry. Please note, carbon has a unique ability to form bond with other carbon atoms and this gives rise to a large number of molecules and this property is called catenation correct these compounds may be a long chain branched chain for example if you see this branch now or can even be a cyclic change correct you see this guy is a long chain this guy is a branch one this guy is a cyclic one so, catenation is the process where the is the property actually of the process, property of the carbon to form chain kind of structure by forming bonds with other carbon. And this can be a long chain, can be branch chain, or can be a cyclic. Right? In addition to this, carbon may form single, double, or triple bonds. That's also part of catenation, right? So it may form single bond, for example, in this case, all single bonds. Double bond, if you see, there's a double bond between these two carbons. There's a triple bond between these two carbons. You see the electronic configuration of this, carbon has four, right? So this guy had four. This guy also had four. It wanted eight, so it got one and one from this hydrogen, and it shared two electrons with this carbon. So it got eight, right? So it got eight in this fashion. To so talk about this carbon, it got eight in this, and that's how the sharing work. In this case, also it had four, but it could get only one atom from this hydrogen, and so it it, it shared three atoms with this carbon, and that's why it formed this kind of structure. This one. So you have to add these. Atoms also, hydrogen atoms. Correct? So you got eight. Similarly, this guy. So carbon can form double bond, triple bond, or single bond also, depending on the condition. So carbon has two properties. One, it forms a chain by uniquely uh, combining with other carbon atoms, right? So it can form chain, branch, cycle, or it can form double bond, single bond, triple. So you add all these things, right? With that, it gives huge number of carbon compounds. Huge number. And please note that no other element exhibits such a property of chemistry. There are, but no other elements.
right? Silicon, it also has four valence electrons. It, it, it forms a compound with hydrogen, but the chain is at the max to seven or eight atoms. But they are very reactive, they are not stable. But carbon is very strong and stable and it forms a long chain, maybe 30 atoms, 40 carbon, 50 carbons. If you see uh, bulk metal stifulin is 60 carbons, right? So it forms a huge, big, big, big chains. And that's why it has so many compounds. And that's the reason why we have a whole branch of uh, chemistry that deals with this carbon compounds. In France, called organ plates. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello, friends. This video on carbon and its compound part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 12. Let's draw the electron dot structure for cyclohexane. It's cyclo. So there are 6 uh, uh, carbon. C6H12 is my uh, formula of cyclohexane. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens. So let me draw two with each, correct, two with each I am drawing, correct, all hydrogen has one term, so let me draw one electron, carbon has four, so let me draw four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? One, two, three, four. Sky one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah. See the way I'm drawing is I'm drawing in such a way that this is needed to hydrogen and I can join these. So the next is I have to join carbon hydrogen bonds. These bonds let me join. This is done. Correct. Now if you see I can join these two carbon. I can join these two carbon. I can join these guys. So now if you see I got the structure and now you see any carbon it has 8 now. This carbon had 4 got 2, two from sharing with the hydrogen. 2 plus 4 is 6. 1 with this carbon, 1 from this carbon. 6 plus 2 is 8. So any carbon if you take, this guy if you take, it had 4, it got 2 from hydrogen, 6 plus 4 plus 6 and 1 it got from this carbon, 1 from this carbon. So each and every carbon has 8 things, 8 electrons. They all saturated, they all happy. And does this come out as well? Let's do the same thing for benzene. Benzene has this formula C6H6. Benzene has this formula C6H6. So let's do this 6 carbon. Okay. And uh, Hydrogen, six hydrogens, so I'll put one near to each other. Correct. And then I'll put one for all hydrogens. Carbon, I have three. One, four here. Four here. Over here, four, four carbon, two carbon. Now, right? Let's join the carbon hydrogen. Okay. Now, let's uh, draw these guys. These guys. 
these guys you can draw this guy also you can draw this guy this guy and this guy now still if you see so many free electrons right so let me join this guy let me join this guy and this guy this is my electron structure so if you see any any you see they has double bond in this and this is my steel bench now some of you can ask why I am drawing in this fashion why can't I draw a straight benzene 1 2 3 4 5 6 right and I can add some hydrogen here 6 hydrogens and then I can add this uh, triple bonds correct that's a doable option why should I do this because that's a possible thing I can do uh, I can create a straight chain also for C6S6 I can create a straight chain also in fact that was the assumption see nobody knew the structure of benzene earlier scientists used to assume that benzene is of this fashion straight chain only benzene was supposed to be aliphatic and they should draw a figure like this but they are not convinced why because if you draw like this it will have triple bonds right it will have triple bonds it will have maybe triple bonds like this it will have a double bond also it will have something like this let me show you so this guy is one one two three this guy is one two three four this guy is one two three four. yeah this is the structure if you see right one two three six hydrogen atoms this is also cc s6 earlier they used to assume this is the structure but it doesn't match the property because as i told that this is alkyne and it's highly reactive but they found that benzene is not reactive they were a little confused why it is happening Generally, all the alkynes are non-reactive. Why this guy is not reactive, right? Then this one scientist saw in the dream that maybe the benzene is uh, structured in this fashion, and then he proposed this model that benzene is structured in this fashion, and this explained why benzene is not reactive. Correct. And then finally, uh, when the chemistry explored, the science uh, evolved, and uh, they got better like, instruments. Then, then they actually saw that structure of benzene looks like this. Correct. So there's a whole story involved in this, right? So with the C6X case, you can form a formula like this also. But this is not correct for benzene because for benzene, when we saw actually using uh, instruments, the scientists saw that the formula looks like this. And that's the reason we will study um, our, a topic called. Uh, isomers in uh, hydrocarbons where with the same structural the, the same formula it has different structures so we'll study that so just understand in this case don't confuse don't come to me and say that why can't we write benzene like this we can't write like this because it does not like this it is based on the observation they found that benzene looks like this correct so it may be some other component it is s6 only but this is not benzene. Benzene is this guy only. Correct? It, it may be. There may be a compound called C6S6 whose name we'll find out in the next few slides, but which will not be benzene. It should be C6S6 but not benzene. So let's draw the same thing for cyclopentene. So cyclopentene, the formula is C5S10. Here also I can write the straight one also, aliphatic chain, but that's not the one. Looking for its cyclo, that means the cyclic cyclic is there. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbon, ten hydrogen. So I'll put two with each, right? And two with two with each. Then I have uh, this uh, hydrogen atoms. Each will have one. Then I have carbon, each will have four. Okay, now we'll join carbon hydrogen bond. So once we are done with this carbon hydrogen bond, this many carbon hydrogen bonds I have done with. Now I'll join carbon carbon bonds. And this is what I'll get. If you see all the items are, all the carbon has now eight. Shared electrons. This is the structure of my cyclopate. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to 
watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 13. Now let's study alkyl group. Before we study the nomenclature of uh, all the carbon compounds, it's critical to know the alkyl groups. What are alkyl groups? If you remove one hydrogen from alkane, please note from alkane, not from alkene or alkyne. From alkene, if you remove one hydrogen, you get alkyl group. For example, I have this uh, methane. From this, you remove one hydrogen, you get CH3, right? This becomes alkyl group. Correct? Is a, and the name is methyl, ethyl, all these are in the groups. And the general formula of this is CnH2n plus 2. Obviously, because for my alkane, the formula is CnH2n plus 2, right? From this, you remove one hydrogen. So this becomes 2n plus 1, right? Instead of 2n plus 2, it becomes 2n plus 1. And if you see, this is methyl because there was a methane here. And from this, I removed one hydrogen and if you see with this carbon is ready to get bonded with someone because now if you see for this methyl there are seven electrons for carbon one two three four four it had three it got from three hydrogens it had seven thing seven electrons it has it is not having eight that means it still needs one so there is one dash mentioned here. If you see ethyl from ethane we got this, we remove an hydrogen from here, we got ethyl. So this guy is in need of one hydrogen. So when if a propyl, we have propane from this, we remove one hydrogen, we got propyl. From butane, we remove one hydrogen, we got butyl, right? So this is all dash. That's how it is, alkyl group. And this can be attached to any chain. We'll explain that. Example in the branch hydrocarbon, right? This guy is a methyl group. This is the branch I have, methyl group. This guy is my branch. This guy is methyl propane. Two methyl propane. I explained you in the later slides why this name came, but just understand this. This guy methyl got attached to this long chain. So this guy, name methyl is here, right? So that's the advantage of this. Uh, Alkyl group, you can attach to any chain and you get something, right? So that's the branch hydrocarbon where you have some uh, long chain and then you get a branch of this. The branching happens. So this is example of branch hydrocarbons. Now as I told the naming of hydrocarbons, we explain, use this term. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 14. Let's go over the naming of hydrocarbon. The first question is, why should we name hydrocarbons? So I'll take you for an example. Let's suppose we have C6H12. I can write C6H12 as like this. If you see, this is totally C6H12. I can write like this. I can write like this. Or I can write like this. All of these are C6H12. If you see, for each of these figures which I have, or structure I have drawn, each has 6 carbon, 12 hydrogens, 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, 6 carbons, 12 hydrogen. This guy also has 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen. But all these has different structure, not only different structure, different property. The property is also different. Correct? And that is one reason why we need the naming because just by telling C6H12, you can't say which hydrocarbon I'm talking about. Right? There should be a name for this so that my uh, chemistry uh, world people, my chemists, can talk to each other with that, right? If a chemist says that I have used C6H12 to react with something, I got something, 
he won't be 100% clear to the other chemist because the other chemist may assume that he's talking about this guy or this guy or this guy. He's not sure, right? So for all these, there should be a unique name to, to identify this hydrocarbons, right? And that's why we have this IUP. And here also, if you see, we have two kind of names for any hydrocarbons. For us also, you see, there are two names generally. For example, we have nickname, Mintu, Chindu, Bintu, Panti. There are so many nicknames actually we have. And we have a registered name in school or in our certificates. That name is a little better. For example, Abhishek, Roshni. They are good names, right? They are registered names in the schools. So similarly, for all these organic compounds, also we have two names, IUPAC name and common name. And why we have two names? Because this common name was used long before IUPAC name came to picture. Because this, this IU, IUPAC name, you see, uh, there, there was a body that, or the committee, which decided the naming convention much later. Before that also, we, uh, we used to, or uh, chemists used to use the name, for example, benzene, methyl chloride, methyl chloride. There's so many compounds already available. Before this, uh, IUPAC came and gave a common naming convention, right? Because there are millions of compounds, right? Millions of hydrocarbons. You can't remember the name of millions of hydrocarbons. So it, it is good if you have a systematic way to write the name for a given hydrocarbon. For example, I have this hydrocarbon like this, something in this fashion, correct? Something in this fashion. I have this hydrocarbon like this. And I want to find the name of this. So it, I can't remember the name, right? So then this guy came, IUPAC came and gave a convention to write name for any hydrocarbon. It gave a set of rules to write name any hydrocarbon. Before that, but way before that, these common names were used for few of the, not for all, common names for few of hydrocarbons. We'll explain that. When we take some hydrocarbons, we'll tell you what is the common name for that, if exist, and what is the IUPC name. IUPC name exists for all the hydrocarbons because that's just a rule which tells you how to write the name. For example, and common name is name for some of the hydrocarbons. Correct. So IUPC name, the reason it came was because there are million hydrocarbons and it was difficult to remember all the names, and that's why this name came. International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, the short form of this uh, uh, is IUPAC, right? International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. In 1958, they gave a nomenclature to name all the hydrocarbons. That is, they gave a rule to name all the hydrocarbons in 1958 only. And, and that's the reason why we have common name also, because before 1958, common name was used for most of the hydrocarbons. But as you see, this uh, hydrocarbon field exploded like anything, a lot of new hydrocarbons came and scientists used to discover a lot of new hydrocarbons daily, daily and it was difficult to write uh, names for those, right, for millions of hydrocarbons. And then this guy, uh, this uh, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry met in 1958 and told, okay, this is my style to write the name for a compound. So, the first thing you have to check for IUPAC nomenclature is the number of carbon atoms. If the number of carbon atoms is 1 in a particular compound, for example CH4, you use the word meth. And thus you have this word methane. If you have two carbon atoms, you use the word eth. And thus you have ethane, ethene, ethine. If you have three carbon atoms, you use the word prop. And then you have propane propene, propyne. If you have four carbon atoms, you use the use but. It's but. Then you have butane, butene, butyne. If you have five carbon atoms, then you use the word pen. Then you have pentane, pentene, pentine. If you have six carbon atoms, you use the word hex. Hexene, hexane, hexine examples. Similarly, seven is hept, heptene, heptane, heptine. Eight is oct. It can be octane. It can be octene, octine. You see nine is non. non. It is ten. It is dec. Example is decane. So, the first thing you have to see is what IUP, IUPAC has told is check for the number of carbon atoms. 
If it has one carbon atom, it use the word meth or meth. Two carbon, use the word eth. Three prop, four bute, five pent, six hex, seven hept, eight oct, nine non, and ten dec. Right? And then you find the bond. If it has single bond, all single bond, use the word ain. For example, methane, ethane, propane, butane. Right? So you are merging two things, right? This, this you got from the number of carbon atoms, and this guy you got from bonds. If it has one double bond also, use the word ene. Ethene, ethine, ethene, butene, pentene. If it has one triple bond, use ene. Ethine, butene, pentene, decine. So that's how it is, right? So use the word ene. So this is what the IUPAC has told. First is you count number of carbon atoms, right? And then you use the word meth, it, prob, but, pent, hex, hept, oct. Like that. And then you find the number of bonds. If it has all single bond, use the word ain. One double bond ain. And one triple bond ain. I'll take some example. This is the very uh, basic uh, step for the IUPAC nomenclature. We have complex one also where we have to name a branch thing, right? But before that, let's uh, make ourselves comfortable with only two rules that is the number of common atoms and the bonds. So, for example, CH4. So, CH4, if you see, if you draw CH4, it is like this. How many carbon atoms? One. So, one is meth. Right? All single bonds, that means I'll use the word in. You add these two, you get methane. And that's how this CH4 is methane. Hope you understand this. For this particular structure, one carbon atom, so is meth, all single atom, in, so it's methane. We'll take C2H6. C2H6, if we draw, is like this C2H6, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen. So this is how C2H6 looks like. How many carbon atoms? So for two, you have used, used the word eth. All single bonds, use the word in. You add these two, you get ethane. So this particular thing is ethane. Correct. C3H6. C3H6, if you draw, one, two, three, and uh, C3H6. So if you see, this guy is in actually, why? Right? Because three into two, six, right? So it's alkene actually. So let's just draw the structure. This is how it looks. It will have one double bond, right? So this guy will have one H here, one H here, and one H here. See the reaction is this guy. So how many carbon atoms? Three. So with it, pro. Any double bond? Yes. Any triple bond? No. Double bond? Yes. So we'll use the word in. You add these two, you get propene. Correct. Count the number of carbons, three, so prop. Double bond, yes, in propene. Let's check this guy. So this guy, if you see how many carbons, one, two, three, four carbons. So it is but, four carbons, right? With it, prop but. Triple bond, yes. So ein, word should be there because of a triple bond. Right, if you want, you add these two, you get butyne. Hope you understand this. Find the number of carbon atoms. Based on that, you use with it prop but. Then find the number of bonds. If it has triple bond, use word ein. Double bond, use e. And if it has all single bonds, then use a. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests. Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 15. Let's discuss the branched hydrocarbons nomenclature. So here are some steps. First is you find the longest chain. The longest chain. And there is a rule that the longest chain should have the maximum number of multiple bonds 
and functional groups. Functional group is something which we learn later now. So we can ignore this part now. Which should have maximum number of multiple bonds. That is the first thing. It has maximum number of carbon atoms and maximum number of multiple bonds. That is the longest chain, right? That's something you define. So it's a critical step. The first step is you define the maximum the chain which has the maximum number of carbon atoms and the maximum number of multiple bonds. Once you have done that, you have to find the uh, Identify the functional group of the paired hydrocarbon. This also you can ignore now because sometimes it happens that it has multiple functional groups. So you have to find which functional group you are looking for. So in class 10th, this is you can something ignore this. So you'll get only one functional group. So in case you have multiple functional groups, then you need to identify the functional group that is based on the priority. So you can ignore this part now, but you should remember that this is something which exists, but we're ignoring this since we're in class 10. And then you find the alkyl groups separately because they are uh, will be a chain kind of thing right will there will be side chains and you have to mark them and name them separately then you have to uh, name the longest chain you have this longest chain you have to number it you have to number it in such a way that alkyl group gets the lowest number i'll take some examples to understand this just i'm going through the steps it gets the lowest number and once i have the lowest number the position of alkyl group is indicated, for example, maybe 2, 3, 5, depending on the case. And then I have this format of the hydrocarbon, that is position and name of the alkyl group in the ascending order. That is, if I have both methyl and ethyl group, let's suppose, right? So E comes first, so ethyl will come first, and then methyl will come. Correct? Hope you understand this, because E and M is in the ascending order. So position on the name of the alkyl group in the ascending order, comma, parent hydrocarbon. This is my format. Please note, remember this, this is critical. Position on the name of the alkyl group, example, it may be 2-ethyl, 3-methyl and some hydrocarbon, uh, uh, maybe let's suppose uh, pentane or something, right? Or pentene, depending on whether it's double or single bond. So this is my parent, this is my parent chain. This is my parent chain. Correct. So the first thing is you have to identify the longest chain which contains the maximum carbon atoms and the maximum number of multiple bonds. Once you are done with that, ignore the second step now, ignore it. The second is uh, for you is uh, you find the alkyl groups and you, because there will be a side chain, then you give the number to it to make sure that the alkyl groups get the lowest numbers and then you have the position of the alkyl group and then use the format to write this name. The format is position and name of alkyl group in ascending order in case you have multiple alkyl groups, comma, parent, hydrocarbon. For example, this one we have, right? What is the longest chain we can have? If we start from here, 1, 2, 3 is one chain. 1, 2, 3 is one chain, right? 1, 2, 3 is one chain. So they are only, I mean, there are three chains, but the maximum number is three only. Correct? So my longest chain has three carbons. So let's assume that this is my longest chain. I'll assume this is my parent chain now. Correct? Now I have to name it. This guy one, two or three. Or I can also use one, two or three. Anything. I can name from here. I can number from here. Both ways is fine. Any way is fine, right? But I'll tell you which one to pick. So let's assume both case now. So I'll take this is my case one, case A and this is case B. So I'll take case A first. So I have my chain, right? There is no double bond, so ignore that part also. There's a longest chain. And this is my extra thing, right? My side chain. So this guy is methyl. Now if I assume in this fashion, this becomes 2-methyl because this guy is linked to this carbon now. And this carbon is named 2. So this will be 2-methyl, correct? And my parent carbon has three. So three is what? Meth, eth, probe. Correct. And all single bonds, so it will be propane. Hope you understand this. You name like this one, two, three. I'll take the case B also. You one, two, three. This methyl is methyl because it is CS3. I told this is alkyl actually. You remove one hydrogen from methane and it becomes methyl. This becomes methyl. It is in second position, so 2-methyl and my parent chain was propane, so 2-methyl propane. 
If I take case B in this way, numbering in this way, this guy is 2, right? So here also the name will be same because this guy is 2 in this fashion, 2 methyl propane. So you take any of these cases, you get the same answer. So both are correct. In some case, you get one here, you get two here, then you take one one. I'll take that example also. But now for this case, you get same in both ends, uh, K, uh, same answer in both the case. So you can take any of these. So the name of these guy is two methyl propane. But let's take this guy. So longest chain will have how many? One, two, three, four. So if you see, this is the maximum I can have the longest chain. Even if I take this guy, one, two, three, four chain, it is four only. So I'll take this guy as a chain. I'll number this one, two, three, four in one fashion. I can number this one, two, three, four in another fashion. This is my case A and this is my case B. Correct. So now if you see, I'm taking the case A first. On second carbon, there is a methyl group attached, if you see. So it is two. This group is methyl, so methyl. My branch now, uh, my parent chain has four carbon atoms. So meth, eth, pro, but, and all single bonds, butane. That is one possibility. If you take the case B, case B if you take, so my one, two, three. This carbon methyl is attached to third carbon. So it is three. This attached is methyl and my chain is butane. So which one would you take? 3 methyl butane or 2 methyl butane? So I'll take this. Why this? Because the rule says that you have to number in such way that my alkyl group, that is methyl group, gets the lowest number. So if I number in this fashion, my alkyl group got the number 2. If I name in this fashion, my alkyl group got the number 3. So I'll not go for this, I'll go for this. So this is my answer. Hope you understand this. The rule is, you find the, you name this, longest chain the parent chain such with that your methyl group or your the the, the side chains get the alkyl groups get the lowest number so in this case i got two i got three so i won't take this i'll take this so i'll make sure that i follow this naming convention let's take one more example i have this kind of structure so if you see the longest can have if you take this guy also it can have three here if you start from here three if you take this guy also 3, this guy also 3, so the maximum chain you can get is 3, right? See from if here if you start 3 or 3 or 3, only 3. You start from here also 3, 3, 3. You start from here 3, 3, 3. So you start from anywhere the maximum you can get is 3. So let me assume this is my parent chain. Just for simplicity because it looks straight. Correct. Now if you see, uh, I'll name it 1, 2, 3. I also name it 1, 2, 3. This is my case A, this is my case B. Correct. Now if you see, on second carbon, there are two methyls. So instead of methyl, I use dimethyl. Right? So it is 2, 2, dimethyl. Because the same methyl is at two places, right? Methyl, methyl. So I use dimethyl. And both are at two position two dimethyl, and my longest chain is one to three carbon. That is pro. All single bonds, so A. So this is two to dimethyl protein. Correct? How? My longest chain is three pro. All single bonds A in propane. There are two methyls dimethyls, and both at position two. I'll take the case B. Case B also, if you see, this carbon atom is number two only. So this will also come out to be 2 to dimethyl propane. So both are same, so I can take any of these and both are same answer. Correct? How you got it understood? You first find the longest chain, then you find this methyl groups. There are two methyl groups, dimethyl. Both are linked to second carbon, 2 to. Correct? Let's take this example. So here we have the longest chain will have 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon. Looks like 4 only. Yeah. You take any chain, you start from here, you take this chain also 4, you take this chain also 4. The maximum it can have is 4 carbon atoms. Also, since it has double bond, I have to make sure the double bond is part of longest chain. Yes, double bond is part of longest chain. So my double, my longest chain is formed. My 50% of the problem is solved. Correct. Now let me name it. This guy is 1, 
two, three, four commas. Or other option I have is four, three, two. This is my case A, case B. Now if you see there is a methyl group here. There is a methyl group here. Right? So I have something called dimethyl. What is the position of the methyl group? In this case, it is 2 2. I'm making case A. This is carbon 2 in this case. So 2 2 dimethyl. My now branch, valent branch is 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon. So 4 is viewed. And since there is a double bond, it should be in, not in. This is my value. Let's try the second case. So in this case, again also I have 2 methyl, so it is dimethyl. But the number will change. In this case, my carbon is 3. This carbon is 3. Correct? This carbon number is 3 in this case. Right? In this case, it was 2. In this case, it is 3. So it is 3, 3 dimethyl. This is still the same beauty. Now if you see it is 3, 3, it is 2, 2. I will not take this. I will take this. Why? Because the convention says then uh, the, the number order which gives a lower number of the alkyl group will be taken. So I will take this and that is my answer. Correct? Let's take this example. We have to again find the nomenclature. If you see what is the longest chain? 1, 2, 3, 4. Can I make a bigger chain? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, I can make. So if I take this chain, this is my bigger chain. 5 power atoms. It has double bond also. So this is my bigger chain. Let me name it. I can name it this way also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my case A. So let me write for the case A what is the name here. So if you take case A, you see that there is a methyl group here attached. Correct. So there is a methyl group. Only one methyl group, if you see, other are part of chain. And number at 3, so 3 methyl, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'll take the parent now. Parent has 5, so it is pent. And there is a double bond here, so it is pent. T. Now let's take the case B. Case B, I'll assume numbering to be in this fashion. Uh, I'll remove this guy, so that you don't get confused now. I'll assume that this is 1, this is 2. This carbon is 3, this guy is 4, this guy is 5. Here also I will see that there is a methyl group attached. And this carbon is named 3 only, in this case also. This is 3 methyl and my this guy is pentene. My branch, my parent chain is pentene. Correct? So in both cases I am getting the same answer. So my answer is 3 methyl pentene. So hope you understand with this uh, many examples how to name your uh, uh, branched hydrocarbons. You first thing is you have to find the parent chain that contains all the multiple bonds and that should be the longest one. Once you are done with that, 50% of the problem is solved and then you find, uh, you take the parent chain and you find the extra methyl group attached and then you write this methyl group and this, this parent one and then you have a naming thing, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you just name in the uh, ascending order. You can take two, two way, you start from this end or you start from this end. You write for both, the one which gets the lowered number of this value is the answer. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 9. Hydrocarbons. As the name suggests, hydrocarbon is nothing but hydrogen plus carbon. Correct? So, compounds made of hydrogen and carbon only. Please note, compounds made of hydrogen and carbon only are called Hydrocarbon, for example, CH4 methane, C2S6 ethane, all these examples of hydrocarbons. Correct? And there are various types of carbon, hydrocarbon. The first is aliphatic hydrocarbons. In aliphatic hydrocarbons, I have long chains, or you can say non cyclic chains. Right? So I have like this, 
or you can have something like this. The branched version also is okay, right? So this is called aliphatic. I have saturated. In saturated, I have alkenes. I have unsaturated hydrocarbons in that I have alkenes and alkynes. I also have cyclic hydrocarbons. So in this we have cyclic uh, chain, for example, like this. Something like this, right? It is a cycle form. So it, it forms a cycle. So it can be, in this case, it is 5, it can have 6 also. The study more detail. So it has 6 now, right? So it's cyclic hydrocarbons. There I have cycloalkenes and then I have arenes. Arenes are aromatic. I'll tell you why this name came actually, arenes. Normally, uh, before uh, actually finding a structure and all, they used to classify it based on the smell because these things came later, right? Because when they formed, okay, found that the carbon has these many atomic numbers, this is the valence electron it has, and it, it does all this bonding. All this study came later, but before that only, they could, they have this benzene, they could smell the benzene. And all these uh, uh, arenes generally have a good smell, good smell. And that's why they, they also call aromatic compounds, so hydrocarbons. So you can leave this now. Just understand that we have aliphatic, where we have a non-cyclic chains, long chains. In that I have saturated and unsaturated. For saturated I have alkenes. For unsaturated I have alkenes, alkynes. And cyclic hydrocarbons I have cycloalkenes. That is, you can say, uh, saturated. And arenes, that is unsaturated. Right. So we will study more detail for all this. So let's start with the saturated alkenes. And this is part of aliphatic, right? This is the long chain. So hydrocarbons are bonded exclusively by single bonds in this case. There is no double bond, all single bond in this case. For example, you take CH4, C2H6, 3, 3H8, C4H8. With all the structure of these methanes, if you see CH4, all the carbon hydrogen bonds is all single bond, right? If you hear all single bond. Here also if you see the bond between carbon and carbon is single bond, ethane, right? That's two carbon and six hydrogen. If you take propane also, there are three hydrogen carbons and uh, eight hydrogens and all are single bonds. Butane also, if you take butane, in case of butane, all are single bonds, right? One, two, three, four carbon, all are single bonds. Correct? So one more example is the pentane. One, two, three, four, five carbon. I'll tell you the naming convention of all these, how the name came and all. Just understand that these are some of the hydrocarbons which are all saturated and they are all called alkanes. If you see the name ane, alkane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, right? All these are all alkanes because they have all single bonds and they have the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. You can put any value of n, for example, you put n is equal to 1. This become C1 H2 into 1, 2 plus 2, 4. C1 H4 is nothing but CH4, this guy. We put N is equal to 2, this becomes C2 H2 into 2, 4 plus 2, 6, right? C2 H6 is this guy, it's called ethane. You put N is equal to 3, C3 H2 into 3 is 6 plus 2, 8, 8. That is C3 H8 is propane, right? You put n is equal to 4, h becomes 2 into 4, 8 plus 2, 10, that is C4 H10, that is butane. Similarly, if you put n is equal to 5, this becomes H12, that is pentane. And you, the list increases, it's not that pentane is the end, there are so many other hydrocarbons which are alkanes, right? I'll, I'll explain all these things and I'll go to the name and nomenclature of this, but just understand this as now that saturated hydrocarbon is something which are bonded exclusively by a single bond. Single bond is a mantra here. And they are chemically unreactive because the name suggests saturated means they are saturated in life. They don't want to react much and they are chemically unreactive. So just a memory tip, saturated means it's like a saint, saturated and they are not reactive. 
unsaturated hydrocarbons. There are two types, one is alkene, there is alkyne. So I'm taking the alkene first. So alkene, they are bonded by a double bond. Please note a double bond. It has, you can have a double bond. If it has one double bond also, it will be called as alkenes. Correct. For example, C2H4, C3H6, C4H8, they all alkenes, they have double bond. I'll show you the structure of these. You see C2H4 is uh, ethene. Please note here, there is nothing called methene here because there, in case of alkene, we start with methane, CH4, right? But here, I'm talking about there should be one double bond between carbon and carbon. There is, I'm talking about two carbon atoms. I'm not talking about single carbon atom because in, if I'm talking about only one single carbon atom, there can't be a double bond between two carbon atoms, correct? Because here, the definition says where the carbons are bonded by us a double bond. So, for a double bond to exist, you should have minimum two carbon atoms, and that's why there is no methene here. Correct? This is ethene. The first element is ethene. So ethene, if you see, is the C2H4, is a double bond here. You see, propene is a double bond here. If you see, butene, there's a double bond here, right? If you see, pentene also, there is a double bond here, right? So, that's how it is. So, if you have one double bond, that particular hydrocarbon is ene, alkene. If you see there's a ene here, alkene, propene, butene, pentene, ethene, right? There's an ene word here because there is a double bond. If you want, you can write the electron dot formula also. You'll feel that, yeah, there's a double bond required because C carbon has four atoms one, two, three, four. It got two from these hydrogens, it got six. Now it needs two more, so it will form double bond with this carbon. So it got eight now. Correct? And similarly for this carbon, same thing. And that's why it has double bond. So you can draw the electron dot structure for any of these, you will find that. Everything is satisfying actually. So this this means there's electron here. Ends has an electron actually. That's how it is. Right? So if you see there's an electron here, there's an electron here, 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 there's an electron here, this. Put the electron in the ends and you'll find that all these atoms have satisfies its electrovalence cell. For example, hydrogen needs two, it has two. If you take any hydrogen, it has two. Right? Carbon needs eight. So you can take any carbon atom, this carbon atom you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you take this guy, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? If you take this guy, this guy is one, two, three, four, five, six from three hydrogens and 7, 8 is carbon. So, if you see everything is satisfied, right? All the elements satisfies the stable bond equation. And the general formula of alkene is CnH2n. Please note in alkene it was 2n plus 2. In this, the general formula is CnH2n and they are chemically reactive. Please note, they are unsaturated and they are reactive. Right? So you can uh, use the same thing, you put the value of any, anything. You can't put n is equal to 1 because that's not possible. There has to be a double bond, correct? And then you'll take n is equal to 2 is the starting one here. You put n is equal to 2, this becomes H is equal to 2 into n, that is 4. C2H plus ethene. You put n is equal to 3, H becomes 6. That is propene. You put n is equal to 4. H becomes 8, becomes butene. N is equal to 5, H becomes 2 into 5, 10, that is 20. This guy is C5H10. So that's the general formula of alkenes. And then we have something called alkynes. And they are bonded by a triple bond. Please note they are bonded by a triple bond. Right? So here we have C2H2, C3H4, C4H6 are so examples of alkynes. For example, ethine, if you see. It is C2H2, this triple bond here. Propine is this structure. Butyne is this. Pentine is this. If you see, uh, if you write the electron dot structure, you'll find that this is how it is. Three here, three here, like this. This carbon needed eight, so it, it took, uh, it had four. It took one from this hydrogen, got five. It needed three extra, so it formed triple bond with this guy. So now if you see this guy has 8. Similarly, you can do with other things also. Right? So that's how it is. 
and the general formula is cn h2n minus 2 please note this is minus 2 and they are chemically very reactive same thing we apply the formula we can put the n is equal to 2 here this becomes 2 into 2 4 minus 2 that is 2 c2 s2 that is ethyne right we put n is equal to 3 it becomes 3 into 2 6 minus 2 that is 4 c3 h4 that is propyne this guy you put n is equal to 4 this becomes 4 into 2 8 minus 2 that is 6 c4 s6 that is butyne and then you have c5 h becomes 5 into 2 is 10 minus 2 8 that is pentyne this guy is a pentyne see this ion here because all alkynes right so it has all ions here and the way it works is i'll tell you the naming convention how it works in the next few slides right uh, how this got the name ethyne, propyne, butyne. So we'll study all these things, don't worry. But just understand in this case is in case of saturated, we have alkanes and the formula, general formula is CNH2N plus 2. They are saturated, they are alkanes. Then I have CNH2N, that is alkene. And then I have CNH2N minus 2, that's alkyne. Correct. And now there is a memory tip to remember this aliphatic hydrocarbons. I have alkane, alkene, alkyne. You see, first three are all same, so you can ignore. And then here is A, E, Y. Alphabetically, if you see that, this guy is A, this guy is E, this is Y. And the last two are also same, but the only thing differs is A, E, Y. That means, you see, alkane comes first, alkene comes second, alkyne comes next, right? And then also here, also if you see, this is C N H 2 n plus 2. You keep decreasing two elements. You remove two from this, it becomes 2n. You remove two from this, this becomes 2n minus 2. And that's a memory tip actually. So 2n plus 2 is alkane. The next will be E, alkene, 2n. And the next will be alkyne, y, that is 2n minus 2. And that's all alphabetic, right? A, E, Y. That's just a memory. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 8. Compounds of carbon are called organic compounds. Please note. The compounds or carbon are called organic compounds. For example, CH4 is methane. We'll learn all these things. C2S6, ethane, carbon dioxide. All these are called organic compounds. Any compound of carbon, anything which has carbon are called organic compounds. What are organic compounds? Organic compounds are nothing but my compounds of carbon with covalent bond. Please note, it has to has covalent bond. Example, CH4, C2H6, right? Please note oxides, carbonates, hydrogen carbonates are carbon compounds, but they are not, they are not carbon, uh, organic compounds. For example, you talk about CO2, right? This guy is a carbon compound, but this guy is not an organic compound. Please note they are inorganic compounds. You will say that CO2 has a covalent bond, right? But carbon oxides, carbonates, and hydrogen carbons are not organic compounds. Please note they are not organic compounds. They are separate, they are inorganic compounds. Other forms of carbon, they usually call it organic compounds. And you must be wondering why this word organic, organic, right? Organics means something nature. Why this? word nature is linked to a carbon compound, right? So we'll, we'll study that also, right? Before knowing that, I'll give you a fact that there are more than 5 million organic compounds. So I told that carbon forms a chain, branch chains, right? A cyclic chain, something like this. It can form a branch, it can form a cycle, it can form a long chain. And with these different kinds of chains we have, more than 5 million organic compounds. Now let me tell you why it is called organic, because there is a history behind this. Earlier, 
these were assumed that these compounds were extracted from natural substances and it was thought that all the organic compounds are natural compounds and they are extracted from natural substances. Only in 1828, this guy Fritz Wohler, he disproved this by preparing urea, that is an organic compound, from ammonia cyanate in the lab. So this guy prepared this compound in the lab. So early it was told that this guy, all the carbon compounds are natural forming. They has to be, uh, it, it, I mean, if most of these are natural forming today also. And that's why the name organic came. But they, this was proved in 1828 when this guy scientist uh, created this organic compound in, in the lab itself. But still the name continued and still we call it organic compound. I hope you understand this. This guy is called organic compound because of the history behind it. Early it was assumed that it is all uh, extracted from the natural substances, organ, organic substances and it was called organic compound, which was disproved. So this definition is no longer true, but in history this definition was true. That is before 1828, this definition was true and this name was coined that time and we still use that. Correct. And please note, oxides of carbon, carbonates and hydrogen carbonate, they are not organic compounds. We have already done this, but let's let do it once again. What are the reasons for a large number of organic compounds? So there are two reasons. One was the catenation, that is self-linking, and the other is the tetra balance. So let's study this tetra balance. Carbon has a valency of four, right? It is capable of bonding with four other atoms of carbon or any other monovalent element. So for example, chlorine is monovalent, iodine, right? They are all monovalent elements. So it, carbon has a tendency to form a bond with carbon or chlorine or with iodine. And it can do with four others. For example, one carbon can form a bond with four carbon or four chlorine, right? Or one carbon, one chlorine, or two car three carbon, one chlorine, like that. So it, it can form pair in the uh, assorted way also, uh, full chlorine, full carbon or mix of chlorine carbon. So it can do that. So it can, is capable of forming bond with four other atoms. Carbon, compounds of carbon are formed with oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, chlorine and many other elements to give rise to compound which has specific properties and which depends on other element, for example, when it forms a bond with oxygen, it, it, it creates a compound which, where the, with the property of which is dependent more on oxygen than carbon. When it forms a compound with hydrogen, it, uh, it creates a compound which uh, has property that is dependent on hydrogen. So similar to this, so the point here is the compounds which have formed from carbon, it, it, it mixes with these uh, elements it has different properties and these properties depend on the these elements. Carbon is very strong in making covalent compounds and they are exceptionally stable. The carbon compounds are very, very, very stable. One reason why it is stable is because a carbon bond is very small in size right? and that's why the bonds are strong because this size is small, it can hold the shared pair of electrons strongly. Please note, shared pair of electrons can be held strongly because of the small size. And the bonds which are formed by the elements of the larger atoms, they are much weaker. For example, sulfur also is a little weaker. Carbon is small size, so it is stronger bond. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 10. If you remember these things. Then I have cyclic hydrocarbons. In cyclic hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons which form the ring is called cyclic hydrocarbons, I told you right, I had aliphatic and cyclic. So aliphatic is no ring, 
cyclic is with ring, right? So aliphatic has alkene, alkene, alkyne, which we have learned just now, and cyclic is with rings. Example, this guy, if you see cyclohexane, is this compound. If you're not understanding why it's cyclohexane, we'll, uh, we'll learn the naming convention later. Just understand there's a compound like this, which is called cyclohexane. This is something called cyclopropane. There's a better view, actually. This is just a way you draw, but this is how it looks, actually. This is hydrogen atoms are aligned in this way, and the carbon are aligned in this way, in the plate structure. In the cyclopropane also, it is like this. It forms a plate kind of structure, and all the hydrogen atoms are in perpendicular direction. That's how it looks. So, these are examples of the cyclic hydrocarbons where it forms a cycle, right? If you see, this guy is a cycle here, three cycles. And this guy is a cycle of five carbons, right? So that's how it's cyclic hydrocarbons. And cyclic hydrocarbons, also I told, there are two types saturated called cycloalkenes, and they are all with single bonds. There is no double bond in this case. Example cyclohexane, if you see, there is no double bond, all the bonds are single, right? It looks like bigger, but don't confuse, it's not double bond. Just a view of this, right? So it's a plate kind of structure. To give a 3D view, we have done the figure like this but it's all single bond cyclopropane also if you see all are single bond right there's no double bond all are single bond then i have unsaturated called adenes where i have double bonds with the, uh, triple bond is not possible in cause of cyclic hydrocarbons because there's a cycle involved right you see this or uh, triple bond uh, double bonds for example this is a benzene you see, there's a double bond here, double bond here, and double bond here, right? So, this is an example of uh, unsaturated cyclic carbon called arenes. So, in this class 10 syllabus, these are not much important. The most important is alkene, alkene, alkyne. So, we'll spend more time on them. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 11. And there are various types of formula for hydrocarbons. One is the molecular formula where we write the actual number of the atom present, for example C2H4 is a molecular formula. Then we have structural formula where we actually write the structure of these, for example ethene, I wrote the structure of these, right? Then I have an electron dot formula where I write in this fashion uh, the carbon electrons. If you see, there are eight electrons here. For this guy also, there are eight electrons here. For hydrogen, this guy is the eight electron here. For this hydrogen, this guy is two, two electron. This hydrogen, two, and this guy, two. This is how we write the electron dot formula. And then I have condensed formula where this uh, somewhat short form structural formula. For example, this I have structural formula, right? And just condense it. So this is CS2, this is a double bond, so I'll just show the double bond, then I write CS2. I'll tell you why this helps, why we need structural formula, because every time you can draw. And there's a difference between this and this, because we'll explain to you why if I have a bigger number of carbons, then this can form different structures. With structural formula, at least you can write it and you can understand which I'm talking about. I'll explain that. For time, you can understand that we have something called molecular formula. Structural formula, electron dot formula, and condensed form for any hydrocarbon. So I talked about electron dot formula. So there are steps to write the electron dot formula. First is you write the electron configuration of all the atoms present in the molecule. Once it is done, find how many electrons are required to attain noble gas configuration. Right? And then first complete the noble gas configuration for all hydrogen atoms. And then my remaining with the carbon carbon so it's similar to the steps we follow to write the electron dot formula the covalent bond formula but here the only extra part here is first i'll try to bond hydrogen and carbon and then i'll try to bond carbon and carbon with double single or triple bond whatever is required as per the question correct similar to the electro uh what do you call it? covalent bond thing the only thing is in this case first i try to find the bond with hydrogen and carbon and then with a carbon carbon. So carbon hydrogen is first and second is carbon carbon. Correct? 
same thing here also shared electrons are counted in the uh, in the valence group both the atoms sharing it for example hydrogen and carbon share it so we count it so we will take in both the cases because it's shared same thing right similar stuff so let's take the example of ethane i have to draw the electron dot structure of ethane ethane is my uh, c 2 h 6 this is my ethane uh, if you don't uh, remember the formula just leave it i'll explain the next few slides the iup's name then you will understand this formula of ethane then this is ethane actually or you assume that you are not you don't know the name ethane you just are given this compound name c2s6 so you are supposed to write the electron dot structure so so i have my carbon carbon hydrogen 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 i'll put six hydrogens correct hydrogen has one electron i'll put here carbon has four electron right i'll put in this i should star passion one two three four the first thing is you join the bond between carbon hydrogen so now with this the hydrogen satisfied hydrogen satisfied hydrogen satisfied hydrogen satisfied now this guy is also satisfied and this hydrogen is satisfied now if you see this carbon four it had its own five six seven three it got from a different hydrogen it has seven now it needs eight one right so it will form a bond with single bond with carbon by because it had seven and it is it requires eight so only one is extra required so it will form a single bond with carbon and there's only one carbon left there uh, one electron left and then if you see now this carbon has eight this carbon also has eight four it its own five six seven and this eight three it got from hydrogen and one this guy got from this carbon so it had eight now the next is let's draw the electron dot structure of ethene so ethene is uh, c2h4 right yeah so i have two carbon atoms i have hydrogen hydrogen let me pair like this hydrogen is one 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 right carbon is uh, has four one two three four one two three four let's pair hydrogen first carbon hydrogen carbon hydrogen carbon hydrogen because as the rule says first you pair carbon hydrogen now if you see that there are two electrons here on each so let's bond this guy to with the double bond and now if you see carbon has now eight electrons for its origin two it got from hydrogen shared from hydrogen and two it shared from this carbon similarly this carbon also will have eight electrons and this if you see this is the structure of ethene the next is ethine c2h2 so i have two carbon two hydrogen this guy is one this guy is one carbon has three four this carbon also has four right so first thing is we do should join these guy join these guys now you see there are three electrons here three here so let's join this so if you see there's a triple bond form here and now you see this guy carbon it got eight electrons why four it had one it shared with this hydrogen five and three it shared with this carbon five plus three eight similarly for this carbon also four it had three it shared with this carbon and three one it shared with this hydrogen so this is the formula i got correct so the question is ethane with the molecular formula is this is how many equivalent bond so let's draw the formula of ethane we just drew it actually so i'll draw it fast this is the formula of ethane Two carbon, six hydrogen. Saturated. Now the question is how many covalent bond? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the answer is seven. So this guy is my answer. So in such question where you are asked that this particular formula is how many covalent bond, draw the structure and get the formula. That's the best thing. Right. Now the question is you have to find the alkynes in this. As I told, alkynes, you see the memory tip I have. Alkane 
alkene then alkyne correct a e y this guy so it has the formula c n h 2n minus 2 correct because it has 2n plus 2 2n this guy is 2n minus 2 so let's see which one fits correct c h 4 my n is equal to 1 so I put n is equal to 1 it becomes c into 1 h into 2 minus 2 0 c h 0 that means it is not there put c is equal to 2 put c is equal to 2 this becomes c 2 h 2 into 2 4 4 minus 2 Correct. So C two H six is not the one. With C two, it has to be C two H two. This is correct. C two H four is also not the one because if I take two carbon hydrogen, it will be two. Let's take six C four H six. C four H becomes two into four eight minus two six. C four H six. Yes. So these are my answer. I hope you understand. Use this formula. I applied the value of n one for this case, two for this case. And I found that in case of these and these, this formula matches. Other cases, the formula is not matched. So these are my alkynes. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends. This video on carbon and its compound part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 7, 16. Now we'll study isomers. Isomers in organic compound, as I told that uh, one molecular formula can represent more than one compound, right? We have seen this example and that's the reason why we told that we are going for IUPAC name because with the, just with the molecular formula, we can't uh, express the compound. For example, in, 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 organ, in, in organic chemistry, when I say NSCL, I mean NSCL, you can understand what NSCL is, right? But in uh, this uh, isomers, when I say 66X6, you don't know, it can have three or four structures. And this property is called isomers, where you have more than one structural formula for a given molecular formula. Correct? One compound having same molecular formula but different structures are called isomers, right? So they are all called isomers. And this is possible only for hydrocarbons with more than four carbon atoms because that is the only thing when you can have chains structure uh, branch chains because if you don't have branch chains you won't have isomers or you can have cyclic things right so, so these things happen only when you have more than four carbon atoms for anything less than four carbon atoms it's not possible to have isomers you can try that you can take any compound with less than three uh, less than four carbon atoms and then you can see that it's not possible to create isomers Example in this case, if you see, they are all C6, H12, and they are all isomers of C6, H12, right? All, each and every uh, picture you see or structure, uh, structures you see has the same molecular formula, C6, H12, but they have different structures and they all have different properties, correct? And if you see, for butane, they have two isomers. For pentane, they are three. For hexane, they are five. There is no ready-made formula to get this. You have to actually draw. For butane, you can draw the butane. You'll see that you can draw butane in two structures. For example, you have C4 ester is butane, right? Because four is but and all single bonds, so in. So C4 ester, you'll see that you can draw this C4 ester in two ways. One is this guy, all four carbons in this fashion, and the other I think is this guy, right? Both are butane. Both are butane. So there are two isomers. For example, pentane also you will see when you find the structure, you will see that you can draw this in three. And hexane you can draw five. And the list, the, the number count increase as the number of carbon increases naturally because you have more carbons, you have more possible options of creating different structures. Now in the question time, how many structural isomers are possible for pentanes? So pentane has one, two, three, four, five. Five carbon. So you can draw all in straight also. I can take one chain or I can draw like this. I think there are three possible structure for pentane. Because you draw here or here, both are same, right? Because you will take the least one because 
see these both are same in this will count from 1 2 3 4 in this will count from this direction why because i'm taking talking about the lowest number where my thigh group is attached because this will be my thigh group now so 1 2 and 3 three possible isomers of pentane you can draw this so i'm assuming that uh, the others are all hydrogen right for example this guy will have three hydrogens all extra which is not there it will add hydrogens correct so exam did this question come you have to add hydrogen also i have not done this for simplicity but if this question is asked in the exam so you have to write this hydrogen also correct similarly here also you have to write all the hydrogens here also you have to write hydrogens correct thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again hello friends this video on carbon and its compound part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fee from exam before watching this video please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 17 now we will discuss homologous series. So what is homologous series? It is a group of organic compounds. They have similar structure, similar structure, not the same, and similar chemical property. Chemical property is also similar, but the successive compound differ by CH2. They differ only by CH2. I'll take an example. For example, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane. They all have similar structure. And they differ only by CH2. If you see this guy and this guy, it has one carbon and two hydrogen extra. If you take this guy and this guy, it has one carbon and two hydrogen extra. If you take this and this guy, this has four minus one, three, one extra, ten minus two, two hydrogen extra. You compare this guy and this guy, one hydrogen carbon extra and two hydrogen extra. So the differ is only CH2. Differ only by CH2. And the reason we are studying is why is this because they have chemical properties similar and they have similar structure. More examples, alkenes, if you take C2H4, ethene, propene, butene, pentene, hexene, all these have similar chemical property. And if you see here also, it differs by CH2, right? One carbon, two hydrogen. This guy, if you compare, one carbon, two hydrogen. If you take these two, one carbon, two hydrogen. Correct? If you take alkynes, this is alkynes. Here also, if you see, ethene, propyne, butyne, pentyne, hexyne, all these have similar structures, right? So when I'm talking about butyne here, I'm talking about this butyne. Straight ones, right? Pentyne, hexyne, all straights I'm talking about, all straights. So that's why I'm telling that they have similar structures. But the moment I'm talking about different uh, butynes, for example this, I'm talking about different structure. So here I'm talking about all straight ones because they all have straight structures. They have similar chemical properties and they all differ by CS2 group. And for these uh, things only because they have so many things common and they have a pattern, we study homologous series, correct? For example, in periodic table, you must have seen that sodium, potassium, they are all part of one group because they share same properties. Similar to this, we have homologous series because they have same properties, right? And they differ by CH2. And the reason we study homologous series is they have similar chemical properties. Uh, they show a gradual increase in physical property, please note gradual change in physical property based on their molecular mass they have a similar uh, same general formula to describe and the adjacent is differs by uh, 14 is the molecular mass because it differs by ch2 one carbon and two hydrogen so if you uh, take the molecular mass of these two that is uh, 14 right carbon is 12 plus hydrogen one each 12 plus one two that is 14 and they have same functional group again functional group i'll discuss later but if they are if I'm talking about homologous series, all the elements in this homologous series has to be of same functional group because they have same chemical property also, right? So they have same method of preparation. They generally are prepared by the same method. They have similar structure formula also. And they have same nature of elements. So since they have so many uh, common things, and that's the reason why we study homologous. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more.
Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 18. Now we'll study functional groups. If you have, uh, if you re remember, my saturated hydrocarbons are generally unreactive, right? But if you introduce another atom or group of atoms to it, it becomes very reactive. And these another atom is called functional group. I'll take you to the examples of these. So understand the concept is you have saturated hydrocarbons, they are unreactive. But if you add this group of atoms, the property changes drastically and becomes very reactive and we have some group of uh, functional groups the first is the halo group and then I have alcohol group then I have aldehyde groups then I have ketone groups then I have carboxylic groups then I have alkene groups then I have alkyne groups then I have ether group which we will not study, so I have put in grey. We have ester groups also. We have amines group. But we will not study these because these are not in our syllabus. But since they exist, so I just wrote the names. We will mostly focus on these uh, first five. Alkenes and alkynes is something we shall learn. So we will focus only on the first five. right? And please note that all these uh, uh, have same chemical property. If you took Halo group, they have same properties. If we talk about alcohol group, they'll have some properties. So all these groups have one particular chemical properties. So first we'll take halo group. So any uh, halogen, for example, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they are halo group. They are functional halo group. They have the dash, that means they are ready to be bonded with some carbon atom, right? So they are generally put with a dash here. So they are all halo groups chlorine, bromine, or iodine, right? And they always occur at the end. General formula is Rx, where R is any alkyl. For example, CH3Cl, C2H5Br, right? C3H6. If you see the alkyl, so it is alkane from alkane, you remove one hydrogen, right? So it is methane, remove hydrogen, methyl, ethyl, propyl. So any alkyl and then one halogen. Correct. So for example, is this one CS3CLC2H5BRC3S7? This is seven actually. It has to be seven. I. Correct. So, to preparation of halo group is to prepare. What you can do is when one hydrogen atom is removed from alkane, it becomes halogen. So you have uh, alkane. You have a hydrogen in this. You replace this guy with the halogen. It becomes Hello again. For example, you have CH4. Correct. What you do is you take one chlorine atom, you take this here, you take out hydrogen out. So this becomes CH3 Cl. Correct. You see CH3 Cl is nothing but hello alkane. So, so you remove one hydrogen from alkanes, you get hello alkanes. That is how you prepare. For example, you have this methane, you replace hydrogen by chlorine. You get CH3C. Correct. And please note they also form homologous series. For example, CS3Cl, C2H5Cl, C3H7Cl. If you remember, I have told that in the homologous series they have the same functional group. So if you see there's a homologous series with the same functional group and chlorine group. Correct? So they also form a homologous series, that means they have similar chemical properties. Right? And preparation of this is very simple. You replace one hydrogen with a chlorine from any alkanes. This has to be alkane. And you get hello alkane. Hello alkane. Correct. The next is, uh, I mean, we'll now study the IUPAC name of this uh, group. So, hello alkanes are named after parent, parent alkane by a prefix. Please note, prefixed to show the presence of the halo group is chlorobromoido. These presence of these groups are uh, depicted by prefix. For example, you have this uh, CS3Cl, C2H5Br, C3H7I. 
so this guy will be chloromethane so if you see what i have done is the iupac name tells that you have this uh, uh, halo group use the prefix and then use the number of carbon 1 chloromethane this guy is bromo because bromine is there two carbon ethane bromo ethane this guy is iodo three carbon okay iodo propane that's how it is right chloromethane bromo ethane iodo propane so first you use this prefix for the halogen groups and then you use this methane ethane propane based on the number of carbon it has correct the next group is the alcohol group it also occurs at the end it has oh and general formula is roh similar to the halo group where r is any alkyl group and oh is my alcohol itself right example is this guy ch3oh c2h5oh c3h7oh so these are my alcohols and they also form homologous series if you see CH3OH, C2H5OH, C3H7OH, they all form a homologous series. Preparation is pretty simple. So when one hydrogen is replaced by hydroxyl group, we get alcohol. Correct. And the naming of this, here you have to use a suffix. I'm talking about the IUPAC name to show the hydroxyl group. And for this, you use the word OL. For example, you have the CH3OH, right? So this will got methanol. Because methane is meth, methane, all. This guy will be ethanol. This guy will be ethpro, propanol. And as I told you that, uh, we also have common names also. So these are my IUPAC name. I also have common name. So before this IUPAC name came, uh, these these uh, groups were very much common. So we used to call this guy CH3OH was called as methyl alcohol. This guy ethanol used to be used to call as ethyl alcohol. And propanol we used to call as propyl alcohol. Please note there is no uh, rule to write common name because uh, it was all uh, there before IUPAC name came. But since these were uh, earlier called as methyl alcohol, still a lot of chemists call it as methyl alcohol also. These names were theirs uh, since Asian, so these names still exist and there's no common name to write these things. Also for this uh, halo group also we had this common name, so I'll take that also. So the, this, this was my IUPAC name and I'll take common name. So common name of chloromethane is uh, methyl chloride. This is also called methyl chloride. For my uh, bromoethane is uh, ethyl bromide and for iodopropane was I think propyl iodide. These are the common names used earlier before the IOPAC name came and these names continue to be used and sometimes we use chloromethane, sometimes methyl chloride both are same right. The only thing is chloromethane is IUPAC name and methyl chloride is the common name for the same compound. Correct. Now we will take aldehyde groups. Aldehyde group also occurs at the end only and this is CHO form. If you see a CHO where carbon if you see has one bond with hydrogen and one double bond with oxygen and one bond is free to be attached to any alkyl group. The common formula is RCHO where R is any alkyl or hydrogen. Please note here my R can be hydrogen also because I have carbon already here. So I can take hydrogen also. Correct. 
So the example is HCHO where my R is hydrogen or CH3CHO, C2H5CHO. These are my common examples for this thing, right? And here also they form a homologous series I told. So they are, if you see, these guys two differ by CH2, these two also differ by CH2. So they all have uh, common chemical properties and they form a homologous series, correct? The name is, uh, the formula is like this, some R, CHO, R can be any um, alkyl group or hydrogen and CHO looks like this. We'll do a IUPAC naming convention of this. So it's the aldehyde. So we use the suffix here after the parent alkene to show the present, presence of this aldehyde group and we use the word al, A-L-L, -L, right? The first two letter of this aldehyde, right? A-L. We use this word A-L as suffix to tell the name. For example, let's do this name of SCHO, CH3CHO and C2H5CHO. So I am doing a IUPAC name. Right. So this guy is HCHO. How many carbon atom? One. So I'll use the word meth methane. And I'll use the word AL. Methanol. Please note M E T H A, -A N A L. If you make it O, it becomes methanol, that is alcohol. So it's AL is there, right? You talk about CS3, CHO, there are two carbon atoms. This is ethanol. P -E T H A N A L. Please do not get confused with ethanol and ethanol. There is A here and there it is O, right? It's ethanol. If I take C2H5CHO, three carbon atoms, two plus one, three. So it becomes propanol, P R O P A N A. Correct. And for these also, before this came, we had this uh, common name also. Common name. So for methanol, methanol was called formaldehyde. As I told, right, there was no, there is no, uh, form, uh, there is no steps to find the common name. Just remember this. Methanol is also called formaldehyde, right? Ethanol, ethanol is also called propanaldehyde. P R O P I O N A L D E H Y D E. This is also called propanaldehyde, right? Sorry, propanol was called propanaldehyde. And ethanol is a, has a better name that is called acetaldehyde. Yeah. So propanol was called propanaldehyde. Ethanol is called acetaldehyde. So these are all common names uh, which was used, right? So you remember this. Generally, I have seen that for uh, car things containing one carbon, forma what is used. I'll show you the formic acid and with uh, two carbons, they use the word called acid, acid, acetic acid is for example, uh, but there is no rule actually, you have to remember this common name for uh, methanol is formaldehyde, ethanol is acetaldehyde, propanol is propanaldehyde. So now also if you see there is a pain, right, you remember the names, but if you follow the IUPAC name, you don't have to remember the names, just by looking at the formula you can tell the IUPAC name, right, so that's the advantage and the beauty of the IUPAC name, you don't have to remember anything, just by looking at the formula you can tell the IUPAC name. Or by looking at the name of the I, I mean IUPAC name, you can tell the formula. So thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 19. Then I have something called ketone group. Till now we have seen the OH group, halo group and uh, COH group. All these adds at the end, aldehyde groups. But these ketone group is uh, added at the between, right? And so it should have at least three carbons because one carbon ketone itself has. And then if you are adding something here, some group here, Minimum you can add is CS3. Here also minimum you can add is CS3. Correct? Because if you add H here, it becomes COH. There becomes aldehyde. So you can't add H here. Minimum you can add is CS3. So the minimum ketone will have three carbon atoms. 
Hope you understand this. See, ketone group is something I'm telling it occurs only in the between, right? So the to occur in the between, one carbon it has already, and the minimum it can add is CS3, CS3 both side. So the minimum it can have is three carbon atoms. Two which you add and one it already has. So it is written by C, O, or this one. Both are same actually. So simplest ketone, as I told, is CS3, CO, CS3, correct? Why? Because you added CS3 here and CS3 here. Is the simplest ketone. Correct? And this is called uh, propanone. Anyway, we will take this when you take the IUPAC name of this. And the general formula is R1, CO, R2, where R1 and R2 are alkyl group. Please note that R1 and R2 can't be hydrogen. It can't be hydrogen. It has to be alkyl group, right? It, ha it has to be alkyl group. So this is general formula. And uh, example is this, the same example I have taken anyway. And they also form a homologous series, for example, CS3, CO, CS3. I have again CS3, C2H5, CS3, C3H7 and CS3, CO, C4, H9. So they are all homologous, uh, homologous series with similar chemical properties. Correct. Now let's do a naming convention uh, of this IUPAC name. So here we use a suffix to show the presence of ketone group by appending it with the parent alkanes. And we use the three letter of this word ketone own actually to use a suffix. And we can do this naming convention to understand. So use the IUPAC first. This guy has three carbon. So meth eth probe, so it will be something called prope, propane and one word has to be used, O N E word has to be used in the suffix, so it will be propanol. Correct? This guy, one, two and plus two, four. Four is butane, right? And then you have to use this word, butanol. This guy is one, two, plus three, five. Five is pent, so it is pentane. No. This guy is 1, 2, plus 4, 6. 6 is hexane. So it is hexanone. Correct? This is how you name this using IUPAC name. Correct? And let's see the common name of this. Common name. So common name of propanone is uh, Acetone, I think. Yeah, it's acetone. This guy is acetone. This guy is ethyl methyl ketone. Ethyl methyl ketone. I'll tell you how it came. See, E will come first because it's a, I mean, there's an ethyl group, there's a methyl group, so ethyl methyl ketone, right? This guy is methyl, this guy is propyl, this guy is methyl, propyl, ketone. You will say why here methyl came last here second. Literally for, for the alphabetic order E comes before M, M comes before P. So that's why they have done like this. So that's the common name actually. So we can't help in this case. So. And this guy will be 4 here, right? So it will be butyl, methyl, ketone. So they are common names. So before this IUPAC name came, since they are all common compounds, the commonly the scientists used to call this guy as acetone, this guy ethyl methyl ketone, this guy is methyl propyl ketone, this guy is butyl methyl ketone. You don't have to remember common name, just remember how you get the IUPAC name. Then we have something called carboxylic group. They are also called carboxylic acids or organic acids. So, or organic acids, they are acids group actually. And it also occurs at the end. The simplest is HCOH because carbon is already there, so you added H here. Correct? So, this guy is called. Uh, methanoic acid, also called formic acid. We will we'll discuss this when we discuss the IUPAC name. 
and the general formula is RCOH where R is any alkyl group or hydrogen right because we saw HCOH also exists right so R is any alkyl group or any hydrogen so they also form a homologous series if you see HCOH, COH3, OH, C2H5, COH and they all have similar property so COH is like this you have C carbon one uh, oxygen this is attached to one oxygen with double bond and attached to OH group with one single bond or you can write like this also COH Correct. So let's do a naming convention of this. So carboxylic acids are named as alkanoic acid, alkanoic acids. So you have the alkane name and then you add this acid. For example, you remove this uh, E is replaced by oic and then you add this acid word. So you have a methane, you have this methane, you remove the, remove the word E, you add this oic an acid it becomes methanoic acid correct so let's do that let's take some examples and let's do the naming division of SCOH I'm doing the IUPC here first this guy has one carbon so this is methane you remove the word E I'll not write E I'll write oic and I write acid so this is methanoic acid second I'll take this guy CH3COH there are two carbon atoms this becomes ethane E I remove oic acid, methanoic acid. For this guy, I have three carbon atoms, so this become with its pro, propanoic acid. Correct. For all these, I have some common names also because before this uh, IUPAC name, we used to call this guy a common name. My methanoic acid is also called formic acid. My ethanoic acid is also called acetic acid. Don't ask me why it is called acetic, why it is called formic. That's how it is. That's a common name. There is no rule for that, right? And then we have uh, this guy, propanoic acid. So the common name was propenoic acid here. So if you see, there is not much difference. It is propane, it is propene. Propi, propionic, propionic acid actually, propionic, propionic, only the spelling difference I like to, uh, in a clear way, pro, pionic, propionic acid, this is the common name, so there is no rule for common name, that's how it used to be get called before IUPAC name came into picture, so you have to remember that that's all. So that's how the naming convention is, you have, uh, also called alkanoic acid, you replaced E with O E. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again. Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 20. Now we have, let's take some question. We will draw the structure of ethanoic acid, bromopentane, butanol and hexanol. Correct. So my ethanoic acid is CH3COH. Correct. Two carbon atoms. So let's draw the structure. First let's draw COH. Correct. And then I have to write CH3, right? Let's draw C S three like this. This is my ethanoic acid. Correct. Next is bromopentane. That is five carbon, and H will be eleven because uh, from pentane is C five H twelve. You remove one hydrogen, get one uh, bromine. Then you get bromopentane. To uh, structure of these, you can have uh, one, two, three, four, five carbon. You can have a, have a bromine here in the in this carbon. You can have bromine in the second carbon, or you can have bromine in the third carbon. Correct. Fourth you take is similar to second. Fifth you take similar to first. So you can attach bromine in any of these. Correct. So if I add hydrogen, also it look like this. I have not added hydrogen. I am taking the first example. I'll add hydrogen also. Will be H, H, 
H H grand branch here. So this is how it look. The second case is you put H here, you put BR here, and third is you you put BR here and you put H here. So we have three different uh, structure for this. Then is the butanone. So butanone is a ketone with uh, four carbons. That is, I can write like this: C two H five, C O C S three. Correct. One, two, and two four carbon atoms. So structure can be like this: two carbon, something like this. Right? You can add hydrogens. Actually, can add add hydrogens here. So here we we'll have one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one, one. This is my butanol. Hexanol is aldehyde. So hex is five. Has should have five carbon. Sorry, six carbon. So it has C five. H eleven C H O right because C H O also has one carbon. So this is my structure of this. So it will be something like this: one, two, three, four, five, five carbons, and then there C H O. C H O is something like this, right? C H O. That's the structure I showed you for aldehyde. It is something like this: one double bond with oxygen and one single bond with hydrogen. And these I can put hydrogen if you want. All the hydrogens, and that is my answer. This guy is my hexanol, correct? This guy is my butanone, correct? These all are my bromopentane uh, because three different possible structures, and this is my ethanoic acid. This guy is my ethanoic acid. Let's take one example. We have to name this guy. So if you see how many carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six. There is no branching, so it should be something called hex. Triple bond. That means it will be hexane. Very simple. Double bond, hexene. Single bond, hexane. Triple bond, hexane. So it is hexane. Name this guy again. So let's find the the longest chain. The longest chain will be these guys only. Correct. If you take this also, it has two only extra. This is my longest chain, and I have one methyl group, one ethyl group. Correct. Let's name it one, two, three, four, five, six. One option. That is A. Option A. So if we go by this, my first I will name ethyl because ethyl comes before methyl, right? Uh, in uh, ascending order, correct? Because E comes before M, so ethyl is which position? Ethyl is four, so it is four ethyl. Methyl is third position, three methyl, and five, six hexane. That is my one option. The second is let me number in this fashion: one, two, three, four, five, six. My option B. So with option B, I'll again name ethyl first. Ethyl is what three here, so it becomes three ethyl. Methyl is what four, four methyl. Next one. So if you see four ethyl, three methyl, or three ethyl, four ethyl. Obviously this is preferred, right? So we will not take this. We will take this way because three and four is preferred over four and three. So that's why we take this guy. Correct. And that is my answer. Obviously, if you also ethyl has more weightage, so it should be the lower number. So it got three here, it got four here. So this is a better option. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.